Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, the D and What If, with another fanfiction. This is the first part of What If Deku and Kaken's secret friendship became public. All credits for this video go to their respective authors. So please support the real author. Check out the link in the description for more details. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. It was a normal Tuesday, the day the assignment that would change everything was assigned. Class 1A had gone to class expecting a normal day, many of them needing the normalcy after the dangerous Shai Hasekai raid that had happened the week before. There was nothing unusual as the class slowly filled the room to start the day. Cheerful but tired greetings rang out. The day differed from normal almost immediately, when after the daily announcements Aizawa didn't take a nap like he normally would for the remainder of homeroom. Instead he stayed standing at the front of the class. Today during foundational heroics, besides paying attention to the lecture, you will also be completing another assignment. The lesson today is a continuation of the lessons on communication and battle. So far everything you have learned has been about verbal communication. Today will be all about nonverbal and more secretive forms of communication. Being able to communicate without letting everyone else in the room know what you are saying. Aizawa looked at each of his students as he spoke. Many of the students looked worried about the assignment, while others seemed excited. The students that looked most worried were some of the loudest in the class, the students who wouldn't know subtlety if it hit them in the face. But to his surprise, Bakugu and Midoriya looked excited. From the very first day it had been obvious that Bakugu was loud and explosive. Midoriya however, was quiet at first but after getting more comfortable in class it was pretty well known that he was talkative, regularly muttering to himself without noticing. The fact that neither of them seemed at all worried about the assignment was strange. This is the first iteration of an assignment that you will be doing multiple times. It is fairly simple, but that doesn't mean that it is easy. At the beginning of class you will be handed a prompt. Your goal is to communicate a message to your partner without anyone else knowing. I will be lecturing and there will be an open note quiz on my lecture at the end of class. So you still are expected to pay attention. I will be putting a stop to any obvious attempts that interrupt class. So please put some effort into this. Immediately multiple hands shot up. Ada, you mentioned that the lesson has to do with communicating without letting everyone else know. Will we be penalized if other people figure out our message? Aizawa let a grin overtake his face. Yes, points will be deducted for every person that is not your partner that figures out your message. Alternatively, you will gain points for every message you can figure out that is not your partner's. As part of the quiz at the end of class you will need to write down your prompt, your message, the message from your partner, as well as any other messages you have figured out. Yeyurazu. What sort of messages will they be? Will it be random or about something relevant to the lecture? Also how long can we expect the messages to be? You will be coming up with a message based on a prompt that I will give you. The prompt will require you to find information and then relay it to your partner. The only official requirement for the length of the message is that it needs to be enough to fulfill the prompt, but longer messages will get extra points. Shinsu, do we have to know the message word for word or is having the gist of it fine? Having a general idea of the message is fine as long as you have all the important information. The closer it is to the exact message the more points you will get. Midoriya, do we lose points if we write down someone else's message? But we got it wrong. You will not be penalized for writing down other people's messages incorrectly as long as they are not your partner. I recommend that you write down whatever you think you can figure out, even if you aren't sure because partial messages can get you points. Ashido, will you assign partners or can we choose them? Ashido was practically bouncing in her seat at the prospect of working with a partner. You will get to choose your partner. I highly recommend that you choose strategically, but ultimately it is up to you. Aizawa paused to allow any more hands to go up, but when none did he continued. You have until the end of this period to choose a partner. Once you have decided, write your name and your partner's name on a piece of paper. Turn it in, face down, on the podium. Each person needs to turn in a paper to confirm that you are both on the same page. I highly recommend that you try to be subtle about who your partner is, but again, ultimately it is up to you. Aizawa hid a smile as he laid down for his usual morning nap. Every year he introduces this assignment and without fail the students don't listen to his warnings. They make it obvious from the very beginning who their partner is, and it is almost never someone that they can efficiently communicate with. He watched one year as two students tried to communicate through facial expressions, which on its own wasn't a bad idea, but they sat directly behind each other in class, meaning that one of them would have to turn around completely to be effective. That pair failed that time around but they used that idea with later partners in later iterations of the assignment to some success. He couldn't deny that he was excited for lunch today. Like usual Vlad King and him had planned their first iteration of this assignment to be on the same day. This guarantees that lunch will be chaotic. Students will be trying to get away from their friends to subtly discuss plans while the teachers will all be on the lookout. Every year there is a betting pool between all of the teachers about which students will be the most successful. 
Just about every teacher that interacts with the first-year hero students place bets on which class will do better overall as well as the highest-scoring pair and the highest-scoring student. All bets are placed during foundational heroics, with the respective homeroom teachers banned from participating. Aizawa never cared much for the betting part, he can't participate anyway. But he always found all of the antics amusing. He was also curious about how this particular class would do. Unlike most years he actually had some students that had proven to be proficient in stealth assignments, especially since Shinsu had replaced Mind. Also unlike previous classes this class understood just how important this type of communication could be. They have fought villains before, they knew to take this seriously. After the USJ it was proposed that they moved up the assignment because the students and 13 were called out by the villains for strategizing in front of them, but ultimately it was decided that they should have the lesson at the normal time. Aizawa didn't want to think about whether this knowledge would have been useful at camp, but at least they were doing this assignment now. While they knew to take the assignment seriously, Class 1A isn't calm about anything. As soon as Aizawa let them loose to figure out their partners it was chaos. Some students quietly looked across the room, and with eye contact and a small nod, determined who they would partner with. They were the minority though, because most of the class immediately got up to go ask someone to partner with them, loudly. Izuku and Katsuki were not part of either group, but no one really noticed. Izuku's and Katsuki's friendship was probably their best kept secret. Everyone knows that they were friends when they were children. That is common knowledge to just about everyone who meets them. After all, only a childhood friend would ever be allowed to call King Explosion murder, Kakin. However, it is also obvious to everyone that they are no longer friends. After Izuku had been diagnosed as quirkless, everything changed. Katsuki was disgusted by the idea of being friends with a useless, quirkless, Deku and began to bully him. He remained a bully all throughout elementary and middle school, only calming down slightly once they reached high school. Or, at least, that's what everyone thinks. Katsuki was upset at first. His best friend wasn't able to be a hero with him, but he never started to hate Izuku. However, everyone else did. Izuku was bullied endlessly, and Katsuki was getting in fights almost daily trying to defend him. After a while of fighting Katsuki was fed up and he turned on Izuku, just once, and all he did was yell. But to his surprise as soon as he started going off on him, everyone else left Izuku alone. That day they came up with their plan, the plan that they have followed ever since. It was pretty simple. Katsuki was already considered a promising future hero, so it wouldn't be difficult to convince the extras in their class to follow his lead once he proves to be on their side. From there he will become Izuku's main tormentor, staking his claim on him. After that, no one would dare to bother either of them. Their plan worked frighteningly well. Katsuki was king of the class and no one dared to bother Izuku without Katsuki leading them. However neither of them were happy. They knew that if they were caught being friendly to each other, life would go back to how it was before, but they were lonely. No one wanted to befriend the quirkless Deku, and if they did want to, they wouldn't dare. And Katsuki didn't want to be friends with any of the extras in his class that had pushed him into bullying his best friend. Their solution was genius. If they couldn't openly be friends with each other, they would be friends secretly. This didn't mean that they would only be friends outside of school, that wasn't enough for them. They wanted to be able to talk freely at school without anyone knowing, so they created their own language. At first it was a sort of Morse code, but after a while they were starting to get weird looks. So they added some sign language, but that also caught some people's attention. Over time and with a lot of trial and error the language evolved, becoming more and more subtle. Each breath could have a meaning behind it, every tiny twitch a message. Their conversations blended into their normal mannerisms. Their ears were always listening for the nearly silent click that would cue them into the start of a message. Even with their hidden friendship, their conflict at the beginning of their high school careers was real. One for all drove a wedge between them. Izuku was sworn to secrecy about how he suddenly had a quirk, leaving Katsuki to draw the only plausible conclusion that Izuku had been lying all along. For the first time in years there were no messages to be deciphered. It was as freeing as it was depressing. Their constant conversations had become second nature to them. But after this betrayal the conversation stopped. Both missed the other. But Izuku didn't know how to fix what happened, and Katsuki was still angry. The fight after the provisional exam finally cleared the air between them. Their secret conversation started up again. But even though there was nothing stopping them from being real friends again, they still kept their friendship a secret. Partially because it was a habit. Partially because they didn't really know how to be friends openly and partially because they were pretty sure that suddenly being friends would be too much for everyone to handle. Recently though, they were starting to think that it was about time that they allowed themselves to be actual friends, instead of hiding it. Acing this assignment together could be the start of that. The second that Aizawa announced that they would get to choose their partners, they had already agreed to work together. As their classmates were frantically trying to find a partner, Izuku and Katsuki were calmly preparing for their classes that day. 
They also were continuing the conversation they had been having all morning about the new hero that debuted the day before, but they were the only ones that knew about that. Izuku was approached immediately by Todoroki, and then by Yuraraka, and then Ada, but he calmly and quietly informed them that he already had a partner. Each of them looked at him suspiciously, but they had no choice but to move off to find another partner. Yuraraka did try to question who his partner was. But Izuku didn't answer and Yuraraka realized that she didn't have long to find her own partner so she hurried away. Kirishima came up to Katsuki immediately, assuming that they would work together. He was shocked to find that Katsuki had a partner already, but he didn't have time to question him. People were pairing up fast. Izuku made sure to turn in his paper after about half the class already had, while Katsuki waited to be one of the last. They had already told people that they had a partner, but they didn't want to hint at who their partner was. The rest of the morning was chaotic. The easy part of the assignment was choosing a partner. Now they had to figure out how to communicate with them. Most students gave up trying to pay attention in class, instead using that time to brainstorm. The teachers would normally be annoyed, but knowing what was going on, they were more amused than anything. Every year the same thing happens, so they had planned easy lessons. Finally, after an unusually large number of bathroom breaks and a record number of notes passed, it was time for lunch. Kaminari didn't care that the class would figure out who his partner was, he just dragged Ayama away. Following his lead Siro and Kirishima went off to find some less populated area to talk. The rest of the class heeded Aizawa's advice and tried to hide who their partner was with varying levels of success. They went off to lunch with their normal friend groups and tried to act like nothing was different. Izuku sat with most of his usual lunch group to start with, Yuraka, Tsu, Eda, Shinsu and Todoroki. Occasionally the quiet group made up of Kuda, Takoyami, and Shouji would join them, but none made an appearance today. Their conversations were more subdued than usual, the assignment obviously on their minds but they tried to go on as they normally would. To their confusion Izuku seemed unaffected by the looming assignment, he didn't even go on a mumble rant once. Throughout lunch people started to make excuses to leave. First was Ida, he said something about the bathroom before marching away, in the opposite direction of the bathroom. Exactly two minutes later Todoroki got up, said that he also needed to go to the bathroom, and then went the same direction that Ida had gone. The group let out a giggle at how obvious they were before continuing their conversations. Next up was Shinsu. He didn't bother to give an excuse, just getting up and leaving with a mumbled, see you later. Yuraraka and Su hung around for a bit longer but they both left within a couple minutes of each other. With still over half of lunch left Izuku found himself sitting alone. He didn't mind much, he knew that this would happen as soon as the assignment was explained. He busied himself with watching the rest of the students in the cafeteria. Looking around he noticed that Bakugu was left sitting alone, his friends probably all having done the same thing his own friends did. Izuku giggled as he noticed that Class 1B was acting just like Class 1A. Apparently they were doing the same assignment. After lunch there was only one class before foundational heroics. Some of the students looked more relaxed now that they had made a plan over lunch. Other students looked even more worried than before. Even with there being more relaxed students, the tension was palpable from anticipation for the assignment. The class period went by slowly but finally it was time for the assignment to start. Just like he promised, the first thing Aizawa did when he walked into the room was hand each student a folded up piece of paper. Each of you has been given a prompt at random. You have until class ends to figure out what your message will be and to communicate it to your partner. I will hand out a quiz in the last 10 minutes of class. You can continue to try and communicate your message during the quiz. However, all messages have to be written down and all questions on the quiz must be answered by the time class ends for them to count. Before we begin the lesson I want to make this clear. There is no such thing as cheating in this assignment. Anything goes. But I will stop you if I notice any disruptive behavior or anything that wouldn't normally be allowed in class. Now for the lecture today. As I mentioned earlier this morning we will be talking about nonverbal and secretive communication. I am differentiating between the two because you can have nonverbal communication that is also not necessarily subtle, such as sign language. Aizawa kept lecturing but the majority of the class wasn't paying much attention. Instead there was a flurry of activity as each person was opening their prompt and attempting to figure out what their message would be. Two students however took notes as diligently as normal. Katsuki and Izuku had years of practice with note-taking while conversing. It was almost second nature at this point. They knew that the hardest part of this assignment would be figuring out what their messages would be. I figured out my message, nerd. Katsuki communicated to Izuku not long after class started. Cool. What is it? Jiru's third line of notes says types of nonverbal communication include, the next few lines say sign language, Morse code, signals, body cues, ek. She also wrote a little note by where she wrote sign language, ask Kudo or maybe Shinsu. Izuku pulled out a spare notebook and wrote down Katsuki's message so that he would remember it. To make sure that no one else could read it he wrote it in the same code that he had developed to write his quirk notes in. 
Wait, what was your prompt? Izuku knew that everyone had different prompts, but that was really different from his. What is the third line in the person to your left's notes? If you are the person farthest left then answer for the person to your right, even though he didn't need to. Izuku wrote down Katsuki's prompt by his message. Oh okay, that's just really different from my prompt. Oh, what's your prompt? What is something that you can figure out about someone in the room just by observation? So let's hear it nerd. This is what you are good at after all. What have you observed? Izuku looked around the room quickly, noting things he could say. That's the problem. I have too many choices. And what if I say something that the person would prefer Mr. Aizawa didn't know? I don't want to accidentally out someone or anything. So there are other closeted people in the class. Katsuki let out a sound that Izuku knew to be a chuckle, but to anyone else it just sounded like a small cough. His question was obviously a joke, but it flustered Izuku anyway. No, well yes but that's not the point. Besides I know you have just as good of a gaydar as I do. They had come out to each other years ago. Izuku is pansexual and Katsuki is gay. After coming out to each other, they sometimes spent classes in middle school guessing their classmates' sexuality. They were usually right, but after someone was outed and it didn't go well for them, speculating on their peers' sexuality just didn't sit right with them anymore. They still couldn't help but notice different things, but they just didn't talk about it anymore. It wasn't up to them to label anyone anyway. Okay, okay, so put something that Mr. Aizawa for sure already knows. Yeah but what? How am I supposed to know what he does or doesn't know? He knows stuff about himself so fucking observe him. Izuku almost hit himself. The answer seemed so obvious. That's a great idea Kaken. Oh my god. Did Ear seriously just fucking whisper her message to Octo Arms? What part of nonverbal did she not get? What was her message? Izuku ignored his friend's strange nicknames for their classmates. He had never been good at remembering people's names, even when they were really little. Why should I tell you? Come on, I'll tell you any messages I figure out if you tell me all the ones you figure out. After all, I bet I could figure out more than you. It wasn't the first time that Izuku got him to do things by goading him into competition, and it definitely wasn't going to be the last. You're on, nerd. Jiru's message was Kirishima has a crimson riot pencil case that is covered in words like manly and chivalry. Izuku wrote down Jiru's message, in code, in his notebook. Looking over at Siro he figured out his message and wrote it down as well before telling Katsuki. I think I know what Siro's message is. He pointed at Jiru then wrote down line 1. Nonverbal, secretive communication is used a lot in underground heroics. He could just be taking notes. No, he was very deliberate and purposefully wrote it near where Kirishima could read it. Please refrain from looking at each other's papers during class, Kirishima. Aizawa suddenly interrupted his lecture to call out Kirishima who was half out of his chair trying to see what Siro wrote. Okay so maybe that was the message, but why did shitty hair need to practically get out of his fucking chair to read it? Siro wrote it in Spanish so that no one else would read it. Why would Tapeface write it in fucking Spanish? Shitty hair doesn't know Spanish. I think the plan was for him to try to sneakily use Google Translate. Wait, since when did you know Spanish? Izuku held back a grin. I got bored in middle school and I thought languages were cool. I don't know why that surprised me. You always were a weird fucking nerd, says the one who knows French and JSL. Plus we literally created this entirely silent language. You had a language phase too. That was out of necessity. My parents spend a shit ton of time in France and I am losing my fucking hearing. You didn't need to know Spanish. Also, you learned both of those languages with me. Izuku moved his metal water bottle a bit so that it was more toward the side of his desk. But it could be helpful. Speaking of languages, Kuda and Shinsu are using sign language to tell each other their messages. Shinsu's is Yeyurazu is using a black pen. Kuda's is Asui is drinking water. How can you even see that shit? They sit behind you. Izuku held back a giggle as he wrote down the new messages. I have a very strategically placed reflective water bottle on my desk. Holy shit. Octo Arms just whispered his message back to ears. I know that they have advanced hearing. But do they realize that the rest of us still have fucking ears? What was the message? Ajiro has books, folders, a pencil case and some loose paper in his bag. As Izuku was writing down the new message he looked up to see Kaminari pointing and gesturing. I think I figured out Kaminari's message. He keeps pointing to Siro while holding a pencil case and then doing the Spider-Man thing. I think he is trying to describe Siro's Spider-Man pencil case. That's four to me and two to you. Wow Kaken, it looks like I might win this one. Not so fast Deku. Shitty hair's message is that Kuda has a yellow pencil. Frog's message is that Glasses is drinking orange juice. As Izuku wrote he questioned Katsuki, how did you figure those out anyway? And since when did you know Kuda's name? Shitty hair accidentally texted me instead of tape face. Frog keeps turning around to look at Glasses and then is miming drinking to round face. How did you know he is drinking orange juice though? Izuku knows that Ida only drinks orange juice and occasionally water, but he thought that only his friend group knew that. 
It's fucking common knowledge. Glasses drinks orange juice for his quirk. I didn't think that was common knowledge but okay. Hiroshima put your phone away or I will have to take it. Same to you Ashido. Aizawa interrupted his lecture again to call out some of the people that were being way too obvious. I'm gonna go get a tissue and see if I can figure out any more. What? Izuku didn't answer before he was fast walking to the front of the classroom. Midoriya, what are you doing out of your seat? Aizawa called out to him, instead of answering. Izuku grabbed a tissue from the teacher's desk and sneezed into it, and then sneezed again, and again. After a fairly impressive number of sneezes Izuku finally spoke, Sorry, I really needed a tissue. Very well, back to what I was saying. As Aizawa continued the lecture Izuku took his time observing his classmates before slowly making his way to the trash can by the door and then to his seat. As he was sneezing he had noticed Hagakir get up while no one else was looking and exchange notes on Ajiro's desk. As Izuku walked to the trash he was able to look at the note on Ajiro's desk. And on his way to his seat he managed to see the note on Hagakir's desk. As Izuku started to write what he just found out he shared with Katsuki. Hagakir's message is Shouji has textbooks, a notebook, and a pen in his bag. Ajiro's message is the seventh line in Aoyama's notes is, it seems that it is possible to shine too brightly while undercover. What the fuck? I stopped questioning Aoyama a while ago. Fair enough. While you were causing a distraction I was able to partially figure out some other people's messages. Roundface kept pointing at Sugar Crash then a notebook, then holding up ten fingers then shaking her head. I think she was saying that the fucker doesn't have anything written on line 10 of his notes. Birdhead's message had something to do with wrists. He would point at his wrist and then at glasses, sugar crash, octo arms, frog, and you. Huh, what do our wrists have in common? I don't know nerd. I was hoping you would figure it out. Izuku looked down at his wrist searching for a clue. And then he looked at Asui's wrist, and then Shouji's. We all wear watches. Ida, Sadu, Shouji, Asui. I mean Sue, and I all wear watches. I shouldn't have to remind you to not pass notes in class. Ashido, hand it over please. Ashido sheepishly handed Aizawa the paper that had just been delivered to her by a little device that was obviously made by Yeyarazu. Luckily for them Aizawa didn't read the note aloud. But he did rip it up before throwing it out. Aizawa walked to the front of the room and pulled out a stack of paper. He spoke as he handed out the papers. As I mentioned before you will have the final 10 minutes of class to work on this quiz. It is an open note quiz but I will not accept anything written after the bell rings for the end of class. You may begin as soon as you get your paper. Izuku looked over the questions on the quiz and answered them quickly. As promised they were all about what Aizawa had been lecturing about. The bottom of the page contained instructions on how to format the back to turn in all their messages. First they would write their prompt, and then their message, followed by their partner's message, and then any other messages they figured out. Nerd, what's your message? You never came up with one. Oh uh. Izuku looked around the room before his eyes landed on Aizawa's hand which was reaching for something around his neck. Mr. Aizawa is married. He wears his ring on a chain around his neck when he is in costume but the tan on his finger means he probably wears it when he is not in public. If I had to guess, I would say he is married to present Mike. Mr. Aizawa always smiles a little when he walks in. Damn, I was not expecting that. But now that you point it out, it weirdly makes sense. Both boys started writing down the other messages after that. Because Izuku wrote down all of the messages all he had to do was translate them back to Japanese and copy them over. Katsuki didn't have a reliable way to write them down, so instead he was relying on his memory. Izuku figured that Katsuki would do that. So he decided to just tell him all the messages again as he wrote them. Pens down. Aizawa called out at the bell range to signal the end of class. Before Izuku handed in his paper he counted out how many messages they figured out. Kaken, we tied. Kinda at least. I mean I guess you could say I won because you only figured out five fully and I helped with figuring out Takoyami's message plus I had six that I figured out. But you were the one who actually saw Takoyami's message. I just figured out what it meant, which is what gave us the points. I guess you could say that we each get half a point. Nerd, we tied. Izuku started packing up his things. But really I won though. What no? I'm the one that saw Birdhead's message. But I translated it. So, you wouldn't have figured out shit if I hadn't told you what I saw. But Kaka Ayan. Fine fucker, you won. You won't next time though. The conversation ended as they both finished packing up for the day and left class, splitting up into their separate friend groups. Oh my god, that was so hard. Mina yelled as Katuski walked up to the group. Tell me about it. I thought using Google Translate would be easy but no one told me Spanish had little things on top of the letter that make it harder to type. Kirishima had his head in his hands. Sorry dude, I forgot to mention that when we came up with the plan, Ciro at least had the decency to sound apologetic. Fucking idiots. Why would you try to use a language you both wouldn't understand? Also shitty hair. Do you not know how to fucking check who you are sending shit to? 
What? The rest of the group questioned as Kirishima rubbed his face. I got a fucking text in the middle of class with his message. This fucker didn't check who he was texting and send it to me instead of tape face. Holy shit, you got caught texting but you got nothing out of it. Kaminari busted out laughing. Hey dunce face, maybe you shouldn't be the one laughing. You and Raccoon Eyes were the two most obvious fuckers in the class, at least he didn't point so aggressively that it caught everyone's attention. Bakugu didn't personally figure out Kaminari's message, but he hoped calling him out on it might inspire him to do better next time. Well what about you Bakugu? Did you even try to work with your partner? Kaminari deflected. Yeah, wait, who was your partner? Kirishima spoke up. Idiots, we are doing this assignments again. I'm not gonna tell you who my fucking partner is. Katsuki was a little disappointed that his idiots didn't recognize the advantage of keeping their partner a secret, but he was also a little happy that they were taking an interest anyway. He enjoyed having friends that could actually act like they liked having him around, even if he didn't exactly return the sentiment, although the only person that really knew what he really thought was across the hallway. He was pretty sure that the idiots he calls friends had some idea that he considers them as such. Why does it matter? You know who all our partners are. Kaminari said. If I fucking tell you, you might figure out what to look for. Wait, so you did try on this assignment? Mina questioned him. Of course I fucking tried on this assignment. It was probably the easiest assignment we have done all year. Azia. All of his idiots chorused at once. Down the hallway Izuku had to chuckle when he heard Katsuki's group of friends yell. He had no doubt that Katsuki had just mentioned what he thought about the assignment, and Katsuki's friends did not agree with his assessment. While listening to Yuraka rant about the difficulties of sitting behind her partner, Izuku got Katsuki's attention and confirmed his theory. He was tempted to continue their conversation, but his friends were walking too far from Katsuki's group, so he had to settle for sharing a small smile as they walked away instead. The class had gone about as well as Aizawa had expected to be honest. Only the most studious students seemed to have any idea what the lecture was about. The rest of the class was far too engrossed in their assignment. He thumbed through their papers quickly before heading to his desk in the teacher's lounge, sighing at how most of the quizzes were left mostly blank. On his way to his desk he stopped to grab a cup of coffee. With classes all done for the day, he has all afternoon to grade. The first thing he did once he got settled in for grading was make a list about what he noticed. He had learned the hard way that if doesn't keep track of what he figured out during the lesson before he grades. He will retroactively figure out messages and grade according to that. The first time he did the assignment just about every student failed, even if they shouldn't have. Of course once he realized it he went back and regraded everyone. But even then their grades were probably a bit lower than they should have been, and it was a lot of extra work for him. Aizawa went through his class one by one and wrote everything that he saw. For some students he knew the message in its entirety, like Yairazu, whose message he had intercepted from Ashido. For other students he figured out parts or the general idea of their messages. Many of the students relied on gesturing, which was admittedly not a bad way to get their message across, but it was really obvious. He was disappointed in a few students who he thought should have done better. Shaoji and Jiru didn't even attempt any sort of nonverbal communication. They just whispered their messages to each other. While it made sense that they would use their advanced hearing, neither have the ability to whisper quiet enough that no one else heard them. Kuda and Shinsu were also a bit disappointing. They just used normal sign language. That might have worked if they were the only two people in the room that knew the language, but they aren't. There were a few students that did really well. Todoroki and Ida used Morse code to get their messages across. Aizawa didn't even notice until Ida was halfway through a message and he accidentally tapped on the desk a bit too hard. After the sound had clued him into listening he got the rest of the message in Todoroki's. But for the first time doing this assignment it was impressive. Aizawa didn't know what to think about Bakugu and Midoriya. The only thing they did that was different from how they normally act was when Midoriya got up to get a tissue, and he watched both of them like a hawk during that whole thing. Neither made any sort of move to communicate throughout the whole lesson. Either they somehow did the best in the class, or they did the worst. Honestly Aizawa was betting that it was the worst. This seemed like just the type of assignment that Bakugo would deem unworthy of his time. It was a bit strange that they had paired up, but it was most likely Bakugo's idea. He figured Midoriya would be the easiest to bully into not doing the assignment. Midoriya probably agreed in an attempt to try and get along. Aizawa could only hope that they would choose better next time and fix their grade. He also made another mental note to look into Bakugu's behavior. Aizawa had thought that his treatment of Midoriya was concerning from the beginning of the school year and he had made a mental note to look into it many times over the course of the school year. However other things kept distracting him. As soon as he was satisfied with his list of observations he got started on the quizzes. Nothing really stood out much as he was grading. Ada and Todoroki did well at understanding each other's messages but they focused on class instead of trying to figure out other messages. 
Many students never got their message across to their partner fully, but they were able to figure out a few other students' messages, even if other students figured out their message. Overall it was pretty much exactly how he was expecting, until he got to Bakugu's quiz. Aizawa had gone through the class in order by pairs. This left the problem duo last. He wasn't surprised that not a single other student had figured out either of the duo's messages. After all he was pretty sure that they hadn't done the assignment at all. Bakugu got a perfect score on the front of the quiz, which wasn't unexpected. But when he flipped the page over he was not expecting the sheer amount of information. Shocked, he grabbed Midoriya's paper, the one he was going to grade next, and flipped it over. When he saw the nearly identical page he couldn't stop his head from hitting the desk. With a groan he picked his head up and decided to put off the oncoming headache by grading the front of Midoriya's quiz instead of the back. Once he could put it off no longer, he started reading. The more he read the more his head started to hurt. The back of Midoriya's and Bakugu's papers were identical, every word was the same. That is not even mentioning the message Midoriya came up with. His prompt to observe someone in the room and figure something out about them had somehow led to him figuring out a secret that they had been keeping for years. Not even all the teachers knew that he was married. Ignoring the content of the message for a minute, Aizawa tried to figure out how to grade them. Up until this point grading had been fairly simple. Getting all the questions on the quiz correct as well as getting writing down their partner's message and then writing down their message would be a perfect 100 points. From there up to 5 points would be taken away for each person that figured out their message including if Aizawa figured out the message. Every message that they figure out would add up to 5 points to their total. The exact number of points added or taken away would depend on how much information was figured out. Knowing the message word for word would earn 5 points, while knowing only a general idea would earn less. In addition to that each student was given up to 5 points extra based on how complicated their message was. The bare minimum message would not award them any extra points while a complicated message would earn 5 points. So far the highest grades in the class were 100 and 101. Todoroki and Ada would have gotten a bit higher if Aizawa hadn't noticed the Morse code. Their score was already very high. The class average is usually in the low 50s. If he was to follow the same grading scheme Bakugu and Midoriya would each have 165 points. Usually people only start getting over 100 after the third or fourth version of this assignment. And no one has ever gotten close to 165. Unsure what to do, Aizawa turned to Vlad King, who was grading his class assignment at his desk across the room. Vlad, if you had a couple outliers in your class, would you use the same grading scheme or would you change it? I would keep it the same. It would be unfair to grade any students differently than others. Besides, we always set the negatives to zero before adding the difficulty score so they can't be too low. I doubt that this is the first time you have a student get a zero the first time around. Make sure you keep all the scores in the average though. It would be nice for class B to win. Why would you assume that they did poorly? It's the first time we are doing this assignment. There is no way anyone did well enough for you to question how to grade them. Vlad King turned back to his grading and Aizawa did the same deciding to just go with it. Aizawa marked 165 on both boys' papers and then moved on, leaving a note to himself to talk to them about Midoriya's message. He didn't want that information getting out. He also didn't want to think about how wrong he had been. Instead of pondering about how they managed to do it, Aizawa finished entering numbers into his spreadsheet, finalizing the students' scores and figuring out the class average. Slowly the room started to fill with excited teachers. They knew that Vlad and Aizawa would be finishing up grading soon and once they were done it would be time to figure out who won the bets. All of the teachers except the two homeroom teachers were invested, even Nedzu, although no one dared to put money on a bet against him. As Aizawa finished he hid the bottom half of his face in his scarf so no one could see his proud smile. This was easily the highest class average he had ever seen on the first iteration of this assignment. Of course, the class average without Bakugu and Midoriya was closer to normal, but still respectable. However including them brought the average up quite a bit. It took a bit for Vlad King to finish as well. But once they were both done all the teachers gathered in the meeting room to hear the results. Nedzu immediately made his way on top of the table and began speaking. Before we go over the results, why don't we go over the bets again? For the highest overall average we have All Might, Present Mike. And I, all betting that Class A will do better. Everyone else is betting on Class B for highest scoring pair. Midnight, 13, and I bet that it would be Takage and Kendo. Snipe bet that it would be Kirwaro and Suraba. Ectoplasm and Cementos bet on Ida and Todoroki. Lunch Rush and Recovery Girl bet on Kuda and Shinsu. Present Mike bet on Shouji and Jiru. Powerloader bet on Kodai and Yanagi. And All Might bet on Bakugu and Midoriya. Wait, All Might you bet on the problem duo. You understood what the assignment was right. Midnight interrupted. I will admit that I am not as familiar with the assignment as the rest of you but I believe I understand it well enough. They are childhood friends and recently I noticed that they are very aware of each other at all times. I think they probably did well. 
but it requires them actually working together. Snipe spoke up this time. Even with his limited interactions with the class he knew that the problem duo were like oil and water. Nedzu cleared his throat and then continued. For the highest scoring individual student, Midnight, 13. And I voted on Takage. Snipe and Ectoplasm bet on Kirwara. Cementos bet on Todoroki. Lunch Rush and Recovery Girl bet on Kuda. Present Mike bet on Jiru. Power Loader bet on Yanagi. And All Might bet on Midori. Nedzu clapped his paws together. Now let's hear the results. Vlad King, Aizawa, what are the class averages? Class B got a solid 55.2% this year. Vlad King spoke with a smug smile on his face. That is pretty good. But that's nothing compared to the 62.5% that my class got. Aizawa couldn't keep the smug smile off his face, nor the pride out of his voice. What? But, Vlad King sputtered as the other teachers looked around in shock. Only present Mike. All Might and Nedzu looked at all happy after all they had won the first bet. Yes, without the two outliers the class average would be 51.1% but you insisted that I leave them in. Aizawa deadpanned. Two students brought your class average from 51.1% to 62.5%. Are you sure you did the math right? Ectoplasm asked. Yes, I'm sure. I was actually surprised that they didn't bring up the average any more than that. Well then, let's move on to the highest pair, Vlad King. What was the highest scoring pair in your class? Why even bother? They obviously aren't any higher than Aizawa's outliers. Vlad King's side then continued. The highest scoring pair in class B was Takage and Kendo with an average score of 101. Aizawa, if it makes you feel better Vlad the second highest scoring pair in the class had an average of 100.5, so if it wasn't for the outliers you would have had all the winners. But, the highest scoring pair in class A was Bakugu and Midoriya, with a score of 165. The room exploded with noise as all the teachers exclaimed in surprise. The problem duo. You're kidding right. 165. There is no way anyone scored that high. Aizawa, are you sure you graded them properly? That's their average score right, not their combined score. Like a true teacher Nedzu sat patiently and waited for everyone to calm down. Once they did, he spoke. Before we have Aizawa explain how their score got that high, Let's settle the last bet. Aizawa, who was the highest scorer. Bakugu and Midoriya both got the same score of 165. They both turned in practically identical papers and they both had complicated messages. What do you mean by practically identical? Nedzu was curious about this unexpected revelation. Aizawa pulled out their quizzes and handed them to Nedzu. I mean the only difference between them is that they had to write their message first and they had different prompts. Otherwise they are word for word the same. Though, Nedzu looks over the papers. Oh. Did anyone figure out their messages? No, Aizawa groaned. I couldn't even tell that they were communicating at all. In my notes I even wrote that it was more likely that they decided to not do the assignment at all than that they were communicating. Do you mind if I were to share this with everyone? I am hoping that we can go over the video feed and see how they were able to communicate this. Aizawa knew why the principal was asking. If he agreed for them all to go over the videos they might find out how they were communicating but they definitely would find out Midoriya's message. Nedzu was asking if Aizawa was okay with all of the teachers knowing that he and Mike were married. Aizawa thought about it for a moment but he realized that he really didn't mind any of the teachers knowing. He knew that present Mike wouldn't care that everyone knew. In fact he knew that Mike would prefer it if they told everyone. Either way though, he should confirm it with his husband first. Aizawa slid a paper over to Mike and pointed at Midoriya's message. You okay with this getting out? Mike read it for a moment confused and then he looked up at Aizawa. Yes, Aizawa had to use his quirk to quiet his overenthusiastic husband. Sorry. Yes, I am okay with that. Are you? I want to figure out how the problem children manage to do so well. And I don't mind everyone here knowing. Aizawa spoke quietly trying to keep their conversation private. But he was well aware that they had an audience the entire time. Mike's resulting smile was blinding, but Aizawa couldn't help but smile in return. I don't mind sharing it, let's figure this out, Aizawa said as he turned to Nenzu. With a grin Nenzu pulled up the video feed, as well as a photo of Midoriya's quiz onto the giant screen on the wall. As he rewound the video to the time class was, the teachers read the paper. You're married. Ectoplasm spoke up. Yes, we have been married for seven years, Aizawa answered. Midoriya managed to figure it out already. Damn it don't tell Tensei. I was betting none of them would figure it out until at least their second year if they figured it out at all. Present Mike chuckled at Midnight's addition. Before any of the conversations could continue Nenzu cleared his throat to get their attention. He had gotten the video feed to show the lesson. They watched in silence for a while until they saw Midoriya scribble something down in a separate notebook than what he had been using to take notes. Nedzu zoomed in on the writing, only to see a series of indecipherable symbols. What language is that? All Might asked. I don't think it is one. I think it is some sort of code. Nedzu answered as he zoomed back out. As the class continued the teachers watched as Jiru whispered her message. Moments later Midoriya wrote something in his coded notebook. 
The class went on and they couldn't see anything that would explain how they were communicating. But they did see Midoriya write something down in his notebook every few minutes, usually after a student had tried to tell their partner their message. However, he would not have been able to see some of the messages, but Bakugu could. Finally they watched as Aizawa handed out the quizzes at the end of class. Bakugu and Midoriya sped through the front easily, only pausing finally when they reached the back and they needed to write Midoriya's message. To the teacher's surprise he looked around almost frantically before his eyes landed on Aizawa who was reaching towards his neck. Suddenly at the exact same time both boys started writing. After both boys finished writing Midoriya's message, Midoriya pulled his encoded notes in front of him. Occasionally glancing at his notes, Midoriya started writing out each message. Incredibly, Bakugu was writing the exact same thing at the same time. It was almost as if Midoriya was translating his notes and dictating them as he wrote so that Bakugu could copy them, except it was dead silent. The teachers didn't look away even as class ended. Finally it was Nedzu that broke the silence. All Might, did you know that they could do that? I had no idea, I thought they could do well, not that they could read each other's minds. Wait, are we sure that neither of them have a telepathy quirk? Present Mike spoke up. All Might froze for a second before Nedzu spoke. That wouldn't make any sense, Bakugu has explosion and Midoriya has superpower. If they had gotten this far into their time at UA without making something as useful as telepathy known it would be very concerning. I will admit that Midoriya's quirk was very underdeveloped when he started here and he might still be finding new facets of it, but telepathy seems very unlikely. It would be concerning but it would make what we just watched make sense. Even so, I don't think that is the case. Both of them are too driven to be the best heroes. They wouldn't hide something that would be so obviously useful. Aizawa spoke with a sense of finality. Well, Nedzu clapped his hands. I doubt we will gain any more knowledge from this. Hopefully the next iteration of the assignment will lend us some insight into what is happening here. Class 1 was tense as the bell rang to start the morning. They had left class the day before loudly complaining about the difficulties of the assignment they had been given. Throughout the rest of the afternoon and evening their complaints changed from moaning about the difficulty of the assignments to laments on how it will tank their grades. Only a few students were not worried about how badly their grades were about to drop. Katsuki and Izuku both being of that number, only joined by Ida and Todoroki. Izuku watched as his classmates sat anxiously while Aizawa made his way to the podium. Izuku smiled as he heard a familiar soft click indicating him to pay attention to what Katsuki was going to say. How many of these idiots do you think failed? Kakin, I'm not going to bet on our friend's grades. Besides, maybe they all passed. Oh come on, there's no fucking way they all passed. I will be giving back your grades from the assignment yesterday but first I want to explain something. I am sure that many of you are worried about your grade, but you will have a chance to make it up. Yesterday morning I mentioned that this was just the first iteration of the assignment. The next iteration will be next week. Aizawa stood at the front of the class, looking at each student as he spoke. Hear that. We get to do this again. Izuku could barely contain his excitement. He better not make us switch fucking partners. That assignment will be nearly identical to this one. However instead of grading you separately for each assignment, your grade for both will be replaced by the higher of the two. In other words if you failed this time, you can learn from it and do better next week to save your grade. Izuku noticed that Aizawa's gaze stopped on certain classmates that had complained the most after the assignment. Izuku heard Katsuki hold in a snort and then start talking. Damn you can feel all these fuckers relax. Maybe if they had actually tried the first time they wouldn't have been so fucking tense. Kakin they did try, they just don't have the experience we do. Just like yesterday's assignment you will not be getting your prompts until the class period starts. Unlike yesterday though, you will have more time to prepare. You can decide whether you want to switch your partner or keep the same one but you have to turn in a paper with who your partner is by Friday afternoon. Fuck yeah, so we are gonna be partners again. No fucking shit, nerd. The assignment will take place sometime next week. The day will not be announced in advance. You have all weekend to prepare so that shouldn't be an issue for you. Aizawa kept talking but the class all started to shuffle as they got excited about the assignment again. A few students who had felt good about how they did were already making eye contact with their partners, planning to work together again. Now, a few more quick notes before I hand back the quizzes. Far too many of you did poorly on the actual quiz part of the assignment. This is an important lecture so I will be giving it again in Foundational Heroics today. If you got above a 75 on the quiz you will be given the option to either stay for the lecture or to attend a practical lesson with all might. If you got lower than a 75 you do not have a choice, you will be attending the lecture. Fuck yeah, I'm not gonna stay and listen to that damn lecture. Kakin we haven't got our grades back. You don't know if you did well enough on the quiz to avoid the lecture. That damn quiz was easy as fuck if you just paid attention. If I didn't get a perfect score it's fucking Rick. I guess you're right, it was pretty easy. I also want to point out that while it is ultimately your choice on whether to share your grade or not, 
giving your classmates too much information could potentially make it easier for them to figure out your message next time. With that being said, you have the rest of the class period to look over your score. Izuku and Katsuki didn't let Aizawa handing out their quizzes stop their conversation. I bet most of these idiots will immediately share their fucking score with anyone that will listen. I want to disagree but you are probably right. Even Ada and Todoroki let it slip yesterday that they were using Morse code. Before Katsuki could answer, Izuku took a moment to look at his quiz. Only two things were written on it, his score and, come see me after school. Kaken, does your quiz say that too? Yeah nerd, it's probably just about your damn message. You did decide to make a fucking message about his personal life. Right, yeah, oh my god he probably hates me. I didn't even think about how he would react to that. If I was right he probably didn't want anyone to know and I just ruined that. If I was wrong. Oh my god that's so embarrassing I practically just told our teacher that I ship him with present Mike. Kaken, why would you let me do this? Nerd chill, we didn't have a lot of time for you to think of anything else and I doubt he cares much anyway. He probably is just going to tell us to not spread any fucking rumors. Right. Yeah and that's it. As much as he tried to be, Izuku was not convinced. He spent the rest of the day worried about what Aizawa would want to see him about. He was so worried that he couldn't bring himself to enjoy the practical lesson that All Might had set up. It was pretty much a game of tag except they were allowed to use quirks. He could tell that Katsuki was getting worried about him, especially after he managed to get tagged the most. But he knew Katsuki wouldn't understand. Katsuki has never been an anxious person, but Izuku has enough anxiety for both of them. Finally the day ended and Izuku practically ran to the teacher's lounge. It took a bit for Katsuki to join him, but when he did, they both knocked. Aizawa opened the door and let them in. Surprisingly there were no other teachers around. Aizawa led them both to his desk and gestured for them to sit at chairs next to each other, across from Aizawa. After a moment of silence that caused Izuku's anxiety to skyrocket, Aizawa finally spoke. Do either of you have any idea why I asked you to meet with me? Katsuki stayed silent but Izuku couldn't stop the rush of words coming out of his mouth. Is it to do with my message? I'm sorry I wasn't thinking when I said that. I just looked around and I saw you grab your ring and we were running out of time. Izuku was cut off by a Katsuki elbowing him in the side. Sorry. That was part of the reason. But first, do either of you have some sort of telepathy quirk that you did not disclose? Izuku startled. What? The fuck? Katsuki looked had a hint of surprise in his ever-present glare. Rather than responding Aizawa simply raised his eyebrow. No, neither of us have a telepathy quirk. You know our quirks, you've seen us use our quirks. Izuku was confused that anyone could think that either of them were telepathic this far into the year. If I had a telepathy quirk I wouldn't hold myself back from using it until over halfway into my first year. I would use that shit as often as possible. Good. That's what I thought but I needed to get confirmation after you both got the highest score ever received on the assignment from yesterday. Aizawa looked between the two of them, obviously expecting some sort of a reaction. The highest score. Kaken we got the highest score ever. Izuku expressed after making sure to click for Katsuki's attention. He was so used to hiding it that he didn't react in any way that anyone other than Katsuki would know. I fucking heard him Deku. I don't need you repeating it. Aizawa squinted at the two boys, obviously thrown off by their lack of reaction. Now for the other reason I wanted to speak with you, it is about your message. You were correct. Present Mike and I have been married for seven years, but I ask that you do not share that with anyone. Until yesterday not even all of the teachers were aware of our relationship and we would prefer it if as few people as possible would know. Later on we will have a lesson going in depth about how relationships as heroes can be dangerous. But for now just know that this information being public knowledge could put a target on either of our backs. Izuku barely let him finish before he started talking. Of course we won't tell anyone. I actually chose to observe you because I figured that it wouldn't be as big of a breach of privacy if I told you something about you rather than something about my classmate. I didn't even think about the fact that me knowing would be a breach of privacy. But really I had suspected for months that you were married to present Mike so while I did observe you grab your ring which is what led me to that conclusion, it wasn't exactly news. You grab the ring a lot especially when someone brings up the USJ or when present Mike smiles at you. I didn't really think about telling Kaken being a breach of your privacy either because I know that if he ever thought more than two seconds about it he would come to the same conclusion. He is just as observant as me if he wants to be he just doesn't take the time to really pay attention to other people that much. I mean we have really different philosophies on how to become a great hero. I believe in becoming a hero that is made from what I can learn from others influence while he believes in becoming his own hero without the influence of others. I really admire that thought but Izuku stopped because of a hard elbow to his ribs. We won't tell anyone. Katuski summarized to Aizawa who looked unimpressed by the mutter spiral Izuku went on. Thank you. Izuku looked over at Katsuki sheepishly. 
He had asked him years ago to stop him when he gets on one of his mutter spirals. They play it off as if Katsuki gets annoyed but honestly Katsuki doesn't actually mind much. Really Izuku just doesn't like it when he reveals more information than he means to. After that Aizawa wrapped up the meeting and sent them on their way. But before they left Katsuki and Izuku both made sure to turn in their papers indicating that they would be partners again. Although they left together, Izuku walked back alone. Katsuki had decided to get a quick workout in at the gym before the evening crowd started to arrive. Izuku was expecting chaos similar to the day before when they had to choose partners. So he was surprised to find silence as he entered the dorm. As he walked to his room he didn't see a single person. However as he passed people's bedrooms he did hear conversations inside. It seems that everyone had found their partners and were already trying to figure out how to best complete this assignment. He was a little disappointed that he wouldn't find anyone to hang out with this evening. And most likely for the rest of the week and weekend. But he was proud that his classmates were taking this assignment seriously. Over the next few days it seemed that their lives were revolving around the assignment. Izuku couldn't go a half an hour without being reminded of the assignment in some way. He regularly found papers scattered throughout the common areas with Morse code written on them. People were coughing weirdly all the time or making weird faces. It wasn't uncommon to look across the room and see someone absolutely butchering sign language. But he couldn't say for sure that wasn't their intention. After all the language he created with Katsuki originally included butchered forms of sign language and Morse code. Overall it was obvious that his class had taken the assignment and gone plus ultra and he couldn't be more proud. From what he could see of class B, they either weren't given the second version of the assignment, or they didn't feel the need to practice as much. By Friday Izuku was starting to feel a little lonely. He had sparred with Katsuki a few times through the week and they had a quirk practice session with All Might. But outside of that they didn't really hang out. The rest of his friends were very preoccupied with the assignment. From what little they had all talked since the assignment he had found out that Su and Yuraka hadn't done too well and while Ida and Todoroki did do pretty well, they thought that they missed the essence of the assignment. Based on who he saw them with it seems that Yuraka and Su switched partners. But either way they weren't hanging out with him. Friday afternoon he found himself bored so he decided to say hi to his sister class. Unlike his class, who like to keep their plans as unpredictable as possible both because they prefer spontaneity and because they are attacked by villains a bit too often to be comfortable, Class B has a weekly picnic hangout. They weren't hard to find. Twenty teenagers being loud rarely is hard to find, but he still took his time heading over to them. He really did want to be friends with them. He thought the rivalry between the two classes was dumb. They are going to be co-workers in a few years so it makes more sense for them to get along. However he still was a bit scared about trying to make friends. So far being at UA was different, but he always had the fear in the back of his mind that he could go back to the loser he was at Alder in the blink of an eye. He knew that he could never lose Katsuki as a friend. Remaining friends even after the rocky past year they had proven that, but he wasn't sure he could handle being the outcast again. Walking up to Class B he was nervous, and the wary stares from everyone there did not help. But, Izuku knew that if he ever wanted to be on good terms with this class he needed to start somewhere, so why not here? Hi, Izuku waved. I know our classes aren't always the best of friends, but I was hoping we could get along better so I figured I might as well stop by and say hi. Izuku started regretting his decision as soon as the words left his mouth. Every single one of them just stared at him, expressionless. Right before he could tuck tail and run, a voice spoke up. What? Do you think that you are better than us? You have to come over here and try to make nice. You probably think you are so great. Oh this class is having fun so I just have to come insert myself so they know that I am morally superior. Monomer rose from where he was sitting under a tree. But no. Izuku waved his hands in front of him frantically. It's not like that. All of my classmates are busy preparing for the second iteration of the secretive communication assignment so I figured now was a good time to try and be friends with you. I thought you were all so cool and I hoped we could be friends at Camp Badu. Really it's not like that at all. So you only came over here because the superior class was busy. Monoma glared as he walked towards Izuku. You were probably trying to humble brag too. Going on about how the rest of your class needed to study but you didn't. Trying to make you sound all great. Not needing to study for an assignment that the rest of your class has to spend all their time preparing for. Well we aren't studying either and most of us probably did better than you anyway. After all your flashy quirk doesn't help you with everything. Kendo had her hand raised to karate chop Monoma in the neck when a different voice spoke up. Nerd what the fuck are you doing with these losers? Izuku wasn't sure if Katsuki joining the conversation was a good thing. But at least it meant that he had backup if they decided to attack him. Of course, here comes another superior class of student probably also wanting to show off that he is so smart, also not steady. Monoma taunted but Katsuki's eyes didn't leave Izuku, obviously prompting him for the answer, either out loud or silently. I was trying to make friends with Class B, but they think that I'm just trying to prove that I am better than them. 
I'm not and I am well aware of it but they are convinced. How could anyone think that I am arrogant? I literally had so little control of my quirk that I was breaking my bones for months. How? Izuku trailed off as he noticed the wide eyes surrounding him. Apparently he was speaking out loud to everyone instead of silently just to Katsuki. Katsuki scoffed. This idiot does shit like that and you think that he is arrogant. What the fuck are you thinking? And Deku what do you think you are doing putting yourself down like that? We just got the highest fucking score ever on that damn assignment. Have some fucking self-confidence will you? Now let's go. I don't want to deal with these extras. Katsuki turned and stomped away. But he didn't make it far before realizing that Izuku wasn't following him. Sighing. He turned around and grabbed Izuku's arm. Dragging the embarrassed boy along with him. Vaguely Izuku could hear their exclamations as they marched away. Did Bakugo just defend Midoriya? Wait. He just said that they got the highest score ever. They managed to work together. I thought they hated each other. After they got away from Class B, Katsuki finally let go of Izuku and they walked side by side without talking. Finally Izuku couldn't hold it in any longer, thanks Kaken. What? You can speak out loud in front of all those extras but not when we are alone, TCH. Shitty nerd, should have left you back there. No, it's just, I'm not used to actually speaking out loud to you. They kept walking towards the less populated parts of campus as they talked, avoiding anyone that might overhear them. Nerd, we talk all the damn time. Not out loud. We talk out loud every damn day. Maybe not as often as we talk silently but we still talk often. Katsuki kicked a rock in front of them on the path. Well maybe, but not honestly. What? You've been lying to me Deku. Izuku immediately felt guilty at how disappointed Katsuki sounded behind his usual anger. Katsuki kicked the rock again. Only for it to bounce off the path. No Kaken. I mean, we don't talk the same way out loud as we do silently. Out loud we are always fighting. We don't ever hang out and we never have real conversations. We are enemies or rivals or whatever publicly. But silently we are best friends, or at least, I think we are. We are hanging out right now, nerd. Is that not good enough? This is hanging out. You kidnapped me from class B and now we are fighting. Ugh, fine. Do you want to hang out or would you like me to bring you back to the assholes you were with a second ago? An evil grin stretched across Katsuki's face. I'm sure they would love to have you back now that they know that we got the highest scores ever on that damn assignment. Oh god, please don't bring me back there. Wait, you actually want to hang out with me? Izuku was a little embarrassed when Katsuki just stared at him incredulously for a moment. Of course I want to hang out with you, nerd. Why the fuck else would I drag you away from those losers and just start wandering? You said, yourself that we are best friends silently. Can we not be fucking friends out loud? No, we can, I just didn't think you wanted to be. Izuku kept walking but he was pulled back to face Katsuki who had stopped. I don't know how to get this into your dumbass brain of yours, but we have been friends all our lives and that isn't fucking changing anytime soon. You have a quirk now so no one is going to give us any shit. We don't have to hide our goddamn friendship anymore. I want to hang out with you. Talking in class and all is great, but we can actually be friends now. But you have other friends now. Kirishima, Siro, Kaminari, Mina, you don't need to be friends with me. I don't need to fucking be friends with anyone. I want to be friends with you and those other dumbasses. Wow, Katsuki Bakugo actually admitted that he wants friends. I should have gotten that on camera. Izuku joked wanting to end the conversation. Fuck off, shitty nerd. Katsuki pushed Izuku lightly, trying to hide his laughter. Kaken that was mean. Izuku pushed him back before running a few feet away. Deku, get back here. Katsuki chased him for a while until he finally caught up to him under a tree. As soon as he was in reach Izuku was shoved just hard enough that he fell over. As soon as he hit the ground Katsuki flopped onto the ground next to him. What the fuck nerd? Katsuki was breathing a little harder than usual. What? You wanted to hang out, so we are hanging out. Izuku feigned ignorance while he was also slightly out of breath. Unable to help it, Izuku burst out laughing and a second later Katsuki joined him. Throughout the weekend Izuku and Katsuki hung out a lot. Yet because their classmates were preoccupied, none of them noticed that it wasn't for the assignment. They had figured out that they were partners. The process of elimination made that easy, but they thought that they were hanging out just to work on that. That was the only reason anyone else was spending time with anyone after all. The only day that Izuku even saw anyone other than Katsuki was set, when Katsuki and Todoroki went to their provisional license class. During that time Izuku hung out with Ida, and they continued to hang out into the evening when Todoroki had gone to have dinner with his family. The class studied so much that by Monday morning they felt like they were ready. Throughout the school day it was possible to feel the tension in the air, but when they got to foundational heroics, they were greeted by All Might and told to head out to work on their super moves. Tuesday went similarly, and Wednesday, and Thursday. When Thursday passed without the assignment the class went into overdrive preparing, making dinner Thursday night very amusing. They had deemed it as a no-stakes practice for Friday, but because it was no-stakes, not everyone took it seriously. 
It was silent other than the chorus of clicks and taps some people were using. But before long the room was filled with the sounds of 20 teenagers trying very hard not to laugh. Kaminari had decided that rather than communicate with his partner, he was going to communicate with everyone. This meant that he didn't have any prearranged ways of communicating. So he decided to dramatically act out the event that had occurred earlier today that he wanted to tell the class about. His over-the-top reenactment of Kirishima managing to get his hand stuck in the dirt after tripping had everyone stifling laughter. As soon as Kaminari returned to his food, Siro took to the floor. He reenacted when Kaminari sneezed the day before, blowing up every light bulb around. After Siro ran up to every light bulb in the room and mimed an explosion, there was no hope of holding back the laughter. Once the laughter started, there was no stopping it. Person after person went up and reenacted something that someone in their class had done in the past week. Mina reenacted when Yuraka accidentally floated herself in the couch when she took a nap. Iwarazu reenacted when Gyro got her jack stuck in the wall. Ada even joined in once he realized that everyone was laughing at the dramatic reenactments, not necessarily the event, so no one was upset by it. He ended up acting out when Izuku casually lifted the couch over his head to vacuum underneath. The laughter tripled when Katsuki went up and reenacted when Siro got his elbows stuck together. No one expected him to ever join in. The original plan for the evening was forgotten, but they were having the most fun they had since the assignment was first announced. They were all laughing together for the first time in over a week. Unfortunately it couldn't last forever. Slowly they ran out of things to act out, and they all separated into their partners to practice one last time before they had the actual assignment. Izuku went off to his room expecting to spend his evening getting ahead on homework or watching movies. However, once he managed to get comfortable on his bed, someone knocked on his door. A smile spread across his face because it was a very distinctive knock. It was actually the first code he and Katsuki had ever come up with. It was a simple code that just meant hello but it indicated that Katsuki was there. Izuku couldn't get over how often Katsuki had been willing to hang out with him all week and that Katuski was usually the one to initiate it, but he recognized that it was partially because neither of them had anyone else to hang out with. Izuku was starting to dread when the assignment was over and they were no longer always free, but for now he was overjoyed to spend any time with Katsuki. Nerd, are you gonna answer your damn door? Katsuki knocked on the door again. Izuku rushed to the door, sorry Kaken, I had to untangle myself. He gestured to the mess of blankets on the bed. It wasn't entirely a lie, he had been tangled in blankets. But he would have gotten out of it a lot faster if he hadn't been too busy thinking about how great spending time with Katsuki was. Izuku ushered him inside. He wasn't sure what their classmates' reaction would be to them actually being friends. But he didn't feel like finding out now. Katsuki sat on his bed while looking around the room. Ha, huh, I should have known your room would be a goddamn shrine. In the past week they hadn't actually spent any time together in the dorm, so Katsuki had yet to see Izuku's room. Don't act like you don't own just as much All Might memorabilia as I do Kaken. I was with you when you got most of it. Yeah, but I keep it under my bed like a normal person, not out staring at me. It's fucking creepy. If you just came here to insult my decor you can leave. Katuski sighed. No, I figured that if everyone else was studying with their partner we should too. Kaken we have been doing this for years. We spent yesterday reviewing Morse code and different variations of sign languages to be able to figure out other people's messages. What else could we possibly do to prepare? Nothing, that's why I figured we would study something else. Fine, what are we studying? The newest All Might movie. Katsuki grinned as he gestured to the laptop and movie he had under his arm that Izuku had somehow failed to notice. What? But don't you usually go to bed soon? Yeah so we better start it right fucking now. Okay, okay, move over. The movie was good, Izuku had seen it before. But it didn't really hold his attention this time around. He was too busy enjoying the fact that for the first time in years, they were really acting like friends. Unfortunately the movie didn't last forever and Katsuki left as soon as it ended, while Izuku stayed up. He wasn't doing anything. He was actually trying to sleep, but he kept going over all the time he had spent with Katsuki over the week. Finally, in the early hours of the morning, he fell asleep with a smile on his face. Friday morning was chaotic to say the least. Everyone was well aware that the second iteration of the assignment was going to take place during foundational heroics that afternoon. They had found out first thing in the morning from Kirishima, who heard from Tetsu Tetsu last night, that Class B had their second iteration yesterday. The consensus was that they did better the second time around, but that it was more difficult. Apparently the prompts are harder and their teacher was going to let less go. Naturally, that sent the class into a panic. Izuku walked into the kitchen Friday morning planning to make himself his usual breakfast. But after witnessing the frenzy his classmates were in he decided that it wasn't worth it. He turned around and walked right out of the kitchen, not wanting to deal with whatever the screaming that was happening was. After returning to his room to finish getting ready, he decided to head to class early. 
He walked past the kitchen without anyone paying much attention to him. But when he was almost out the door to leave the dorm, Katsuki yelled from the kitchen, Where do you think you're going, Deku? All other noise stopped, waiting to see what this was all about. Izuku turned around confused. Class, without breakfast, TCH, you know better than that. Izuku pulled an apple out of his bag that he had put in the day before. I have an apple. He hadn't been planning on eating it. But maybe it would convince Katsuki to let him go. He really didn't feel like hanging around his panicked classmates right now. An apple. Really, get your ass over here. Izuku begrudgingly headed over to the kitchen. Only for Katsuki to shove a bowl of rice and egg at him and push him into a chair. Eat Katsuki grunted at Izuku as he grabbed a second bowl of the same thing. They sat in silence eating as all of their classmates stared at them. What was that about Kakin? Izuku couldn't help but to ask silently as they ate. If you plan to be the number two hero you can't skip fucking breakfast. Katsuki answered without talking as well. They were both very aware that their classmates were staring at them. Number two, Kakin, I'm gonna be number one. You won't be either if you skip breakfast idiot. They finished eating quickly after that and Izuku headed to the door to walk to class. Oi, nerd, wait a second, I'll walk with you. Katsuki said silently before sprinting up to his room to finish getting ready. Izuku started putting on his shoes in slow motion. He didn't want to bring attention to the fact that he was waiting for Katsuki. All of their classmates were still watching, but he really did want to walk with Katsuki to class. Luckily Katsuki was fast. By the time Izuku was finished putting his shoes on, Katsuki had come back downstairs and already had one shoe on. A second later they were on their way to class, their classmates still staring at them as they left. Ada had just finished making his breakfast when Bakugou yelled across the room at Midori. Normally he would reprimand his explosive classmate for yelling, but he was curious how this would turn out. Unlike most interactions between the two, Bakugou didn't actually sound mad. The rest of their interaction left everyone speechless. The uncontrollable chaos was silenced instantly by Bakugou forcing Midoriya to eat breakfast. Not just any breakfast either. A breakfast that Bakugou made, even though Bakugou never shares his food. Ada was dumbfounded, as was most of the class it seemed. To his surprise the strange morning didn't end there. Midoriya moved in slow motion to put on his shoes, only for Bakugou to sprint down to leave with him. As class president Ida felt that it was his responsibility to make sure that his classmates keep the volume down. But he didn't even try to silence the exclamations that rang out as soon as the door shut after the pair. Did that actually just happen? I'm awake right, this isn't a dream. What alternate universe did I wake up in? Hey, Ida finally spoke up, yelling above the noise to get everyone's attention. I know what just happened is highly unusual but it is not our business. We should be spending this time preparing for the assignment today rather than speculating. Ida's words had the desired effect, but the energy in the room did not go back to what it was before. Something about the whole interaction had calmed everyone. Maybe seeing their most aggressive classmate get his rival to eat breakfast reminded them that today is just another day after all and it needed to be treated as such. More than likely though, they were just dwelling on the interaction silently. Either way, Ada was happy to finish his breakfast in silence. Ada got to class at his usual time. Normally he would be the first one there, so he was excited to have company for once, but to his surprise Bakugou and Midoriya weren't there, resigned to the fact that he will be spending the time before class alone, like he does most mornings. Ada took out his remade Morse code sheet to study. He and Todoroki decided to use Morse code again, except every letter shifted too. This meant that the code for A was actually the code for C and generally accepted Morse code and so on. They both tried to memorize it, but they have cheat sheets just in case, not wanting to waste any time. Ida started studying. After leaving the dorm Katsuki and Izuku had started walking toward class, but it was a beautiful morning so they decided to take a detour around campus, they had more than enough time. As they walked Izuku asked, I get that you wanted me to eat breakfast, but why did you make such a big deal about it? All of our classmates were watching. That's why I made a big deal about it. Those fuckers are all so stressed about this Ganem assignment. The charades thing worked as a distraction. Why not distract them some more? Katsuki looked at the ground the whole time he spoke. Izuku felt a strange feeling in his chest as he realized that Katsuki was just being caring in his own abrasive way. You publicly forced me to eat breakfast to relieve our classmates' stress. While well, you really do care about all of us. No shit. If you tell anyone though I will not hesitate to blast your head off. Katsuki pushed Izuku with his shoulder. Yeah yeah yeah. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone that you are secretly a softie. Izuku joked. Katsuki just laughed and pushed Izuku harder than before. Izuku stumbled and fell onto the grass. He sat on the ground and dramatically pouted up at Katsuki. That was mean. Yeah, cause I'm not a fucking softie. Katsuki said even though he held out a hand to help Izuku up. Izuku grabbed Katsuki's hand, but instead of using it to pull himself up, he pulled Katsuki to the ground. Izuku burst out laughing at the offended look on Katsuki's face. Katsuki fought to keep an angry look on his face, but in the end laughter won out. 
Unable to help it they both laughed until they couldn't breathe, rolling on the floor next to each other. After a few minutes of laughing Izuku looked at his watch and realized how much time they had wasted. He quickly moved to get up as he spoke. Oh no, we gotta go, class starts soon. Oh shit. Katsuki got up as well and then started running. Racia nerd. Both of them took off on a full sprint to the classroom, arriving out of breath a few minutes later. They still had a couple minutes before class started, but they were too out of breath to talk to anyone. Instead they busied themselves with getting ready for the day. Determined to ignore the stares they could feel on them from all of their classmates. Did you guys seriously leave the dorm early this morning to go fight? Kaminari spoke up from where he was sitting on a desk. Katsuki and Izuku just looked at each other confused. After a second of looking at each other they burst out in laughter. They had grass stains on their pants and leaves and grass in their hair. It looked like they had just been outside rolling on the grass, which was exactly what they had been doing. Except to any of their classmates the obvious answer was that they were fighting. After all, they hated each other and couldn't possibly have been enjoying each other's company. They never managed to answer Kaminari, because as soon as they stopped laughing, class started for the day. Luckily, everyone stopped staring at them not long after class began, there were bigger things to worry about today anyway. The rest of the day was tense, but otherwise it was pretty normal until lunch. As soon as lunch started everyone broke into their partners for some last-minute study. Izuku started walking to the cafeteria, expecting to spend lunch alone, when Katsuki walked up beside him. Kakin, what? Are you walking to lunch with me? No I just happened to perfectly match my fucking pace to yours after catching up to you. TCH, obviously I'm walking to lunch with you. Right, right, uh, why? Why the fuck not? They reached the cafeteria and got in line to get food, the whole time staying next to each other but seemingly not interacting at all. Um um, cause everyone thinks we can barely stand each other. I mean we came back covered in grass this morning and their first thought was we were fighting. If it was literally anyone else they would have thought something very different had happened. Like what nerd? What? You said that if we were anyone else they would have thought we did something different. What would they have thought we had done? They would have thought. Izuku turned red. That we were rolling on the ground. Yep that's it. That's the only thing that it could be. Katsuki started chuckling. Cluing Izuku in. You were teasing me. Kako and that's mean. Izuku pushed Katsuki with his shoulder. Before remembering that they were surrounded by people. Izuku was too embarrassed to say anything else. They silently got their food and sat down at a table. After a while Katsuki started a silent conversation about the upcoming assignment. With both of them invested in the conversation, lunch ended quickly. The class before foundational heroics passed quickly and almost too soon it was time for the assignment. Aizawa walked into the class and immediately walked to the board and started writing. When he finished, he stepped back to allow the class to read it as he read it out loud. What is something that you have observed about someone in this room? As all of you are probably aware, today we will be doing the second iteration of the assignment. Instead of everyone getting separate prompts, this is everyone's prompt. For a few of you this prompt should sound familiar. It is similar to one of the possibilities from last time. Aizawa looked at each student. I want to make it clear that even though your prompt is all the same, your message cannot be the same as anyone else. If I think your message is too close to someone else's in the class I will assume that one of you found out the other's message and decided to use their message as your own. Neither of you will get any points for your message. Many students looked around worried. The best way to avoid that is to make sure that you choose a complicated enough message that someone else won't also use it. Aizawa continued talking. Just like last time you have until the end of class to tell your partner your message. I will give a quiz at the end of class that will be filled out the same as the one from last week. Unlike last time I will be more strict. If I see or hear anything unusual I will call it out to the class. At that point it is up to you on whether or not you want to continue what you were doing. However you can be sure to have the attention of the room on you. Almost as soon as Aizawa finished talking Izuku heard an almost silent click. Without a thought, he started paying attention to whatever his friend was about to say. All right nerd, we on for the same competition as last time. Izuku grinned. Of course, I have to defend my win from last time. Fat chance Deku, I'm winning this time around. Aizawa kept talking and both boys took notes. But they were also very focused on their classmates, both to think of their own message and to figure out other people's messages. It wasn't long until Izuku started to hear tapping. He recognized it immediately as Morse code. He wrote down what he was hearing as he figured out who was tapping. It wasn't hard to see that it was Todoroki. Once Todoroki stopped tapping Izuku looked down at what he wrote, but it didn't make any sense. Before he could decipher it he heard Ida start tapping. He wrote down what Ida was tapping as well, but someone else started tapping not long after Ida did. Hey, I'm trying to figure out Ida's and Todoroki's messages, but someone else is tapping too. Can you figure that out? Izuku struggled to pick out Ida's message from the other tapper. Yeah, Pinky left her cheat sheet in my room the other day. 
The fucking idiot probably didn't even notice. I can figure out her and Frogface's messages. Izuku finished writing down what he thought was Ada's message. He knew that a few words were definitely distorted by the other tapper. But he hoped it would be close enough to what he actually said that they could figure out the message. Of course, that wouldn't matter if he couldn't decode the Morse code. Okay, Pinky's message was Midoriya never really had friends before. He always seems to question if he is being an okay friend. Well, okay, I mean she's not wrong but she didn't have to say it. Izuku wrote down the message in code in a separate notebook just like he did last time, all while taking notes. Yeah damn, she really called you out there. Frogface's messages. Takoyami struggles to concentrate sometimes because Dark Shadow gets bored. Kaminari eyes up front please. Aizawa called out. Kaminari had been turned around completely to look at Kirishima. Awesome, I'm still figuring out Todoroki and Ida's messages. Have you figured out any more? Not yet. These idiots are all acting less idiotic than usual. It looks like charades was just for fun last night. The whole time they had been communicating. Izuku had also been trying to decode Todoroki's message and pay attention to the lecture. He barely was able to stop himself from laughing when he finally decoded it. It was so on brand for Todoroki, their resident conspiracy theorist, that Izuku almost didn't have to decode the entire message, he had heard the theory often enough. Todoroki's message is that Shinsu is the love child of Mr. Aizawa and Ms. Joke. He looks and acts like Mr. Aizawa but he has a quirk that controls someone almost like Ms. Joke can control people's laughter. Decoding Todoroki's message had given Izuku an idea for his own message, so he wrote down his own after he finished writing the message he decoded. He didn't bother to tell Katsuki though, he figured he might as well wait until they had the quizzes. What the fuck? Katsuki chuckled. Todoroki likes conspiracy theories. No shit, is Glass's message in the same code? I think so, give me a sec to decode it. Izuku tried to decode the whole message, but parts of it were distorted enough that he couldn't figure out enough of the words. Luckily they figured out enough. I couldn't figure it out word for word because of the other tapping. But I was able to figure out that the message is about us being better friends, we understand each other. Damn, one of your idiots figured it out. I wasn't expecting that. Kakin, I don't say anything when you call your friends idiots because I know you don't mean it, but my friends aren't idiots. Izuku had debated calling Katsuki out on calling his friends idiots way back when he first started it but he had decided not to once he realized how fondly he said it. He wasn't naive enough to think that the fondness Katsuki had for his friends extended to Izuku's friends as well. Would you rather I go back to calling everyone extras? You have your idiots and I have mine. Does it physically hurt you to say friends? You're my friend. Okay, so what? It takes 15 years to be considered friends. Izuku could tell that this conversation was making Katsuki uncomfortable, but he refused to just drop it. No, it's UG. They're my idiots. You're my friend. You know most people differentiate by saying friends and best friend, not idiots and friend. What? Ida, Todoroki and them, they're my friends. You are my best friend. Although they have struggled recently figuring out what their out loud relationship was, Izuku meant it. While they have had their ups and downs and they usually act like they hate each other in public, Katsuki is the only person that knows just about everything about him. He trusts him with everything, tells him things that he wouldn't dare tell his new friends. Most importantly though, he knows that he could never mess anything up with Katsuki. Every day he worries that he will do something that would cause the rest of his friends to leave him. But he never has to worry about Katsuki leaving. Hearing Katsuki differentiate between his other friends and him made him think that maybe Katsuki actually feels the same way. Unfortunately Katsuki didn't get a chance to respond because Kaminari suddenly slammed his hands on the table and started coughing like crazy. While the whole class looked at him, Izuku took that chance to look around. He noticed that Siro and Kirishima used the distraction to swap notes. I can't see the notes, but Kirishima and Siro swapped papers when Kaminari started coughing. Damn, Shinsu, is there a reason that your hands are moving like that? Aizawa interrupted his lecture to call out the boy who was signing to Kuda. No reason, Shinsu responded cheerily, without stopping his motions. As the whole class watched, Kuda started moving his hands as well. While wow, Kuda and Shinsu are using American Sign Language this time. You know ASL. Yeah, Izuku was confused about why Katsuki was surprised. They had already gone over that Izuku had a language face. What the fuck? First Spanish, now ASL. How many fucking languages do you know? Ooh, six, Japanese, English, Spanish, French, JSL, and ASL. What the fuck? Katsuki didn't bother to hide that he was shaking his head. What are their messages then? Shinsu's messages. Kaminari brings attention to himself to hide that he is actually really frustrated with how his quirk affects his brain. When no one is watching he lets his frustration show. Kuda's message is dot 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 a dot 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 zero actually really hates being called tape face because he is insecure that he is so plain. He makes a face whenever Bakugu calls him that but he doesn't say anything because he is insecure about his position in their friend group. Damn, how the fuck do your idiots know my idiots more than me? 
What the fuck? How did I miss that? Izuku pretended not to notice how hurt Katsuki was by that. Kakin, they both hide it well, especially from you. What do you mean, especially from me? I'm usually really fucking observant. I know, they know that. They specifically are hiding this from you. Not as much from the rest of the class. Wait, did you know? No, but now that I'm thinking about it, it makes sense. He hadn't paid much attention to Katsuki's friends. But looking back, Siro always did barely flinch when Katsuki called him tape face. Izuku always thought that it might have had something to do with Katsuki's loud volume. But thinking about it, the rest of his friends are just as loud and he never saw Siro flinch from them. Also looking at Kaminari from that point of view really did explain a lot. Damn, what the fuck. Before they could discuss anything else, Kirishima made a big show of picking up his pencil, accidentally slamming his hardened head into his desk. Izuku looked around to see Hiyama and Kaminari swapping notes. However, Izuku was too far away to see what they said. As that was happening, Dark Shadow shot out from Takoyami over to Sadu, before swapping a note and returning to Takoyami. Their method of passing notes might have worked well, it was so quick, but Dark Shadow didn't pay much attention to how she was holding the notes, accidentally holding them so that the writing was visible. Unfortunately it was so quick that Izuku couldn't make out much. Takoyami's message has something to do with Kirishima and darkness. A fucking course it is, edgy as fuck as usual. Yeah, I saw Sato's note too but I couldn't really read it. His handwriting was a mess, but I think it said something about Uraraka and again. Fuck, well we can at least get partial credit from those. The lecture continued but there wasn't much else happening. After a few minutes Izuku decided to take matters into his own hands. Kakin, I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time. Look around and see if you can read anyone's notes. That's gonna be suspicious as fuck. Besides, how will you sneezing help me see any better? No one has any idea how we get our messages to each other. So when I do the same thing as last time they will be watching our every move. I noticed it when Kirishima made a scene. Everyone was so focused on watching him, they didn't think to hide what was on their desk. If we don't make it obvious we are looking, we could probably figure out a lot of people's messages. That is assuming that they just leave their notes on their desk. I know I call them idiots, but they aren't that stupid. I wouldn't call it stupid. They need to keep the message on hand so that they can write it on the quiz once they get it. No one is going to waste their time memorizing the messages. Izuku didn't wait for Katsuki's response before getting up and making his way to the tissues. As he expected the entire class was watching him like a hawk. Aizawa had even stopped lecturing to watch him. As soon as he got to the tissues he started sneezing. About a minute after he started he finally stopped and took his time walking to the trash can. As he walked he was able to get a good view of Hagakure and Ajiro's notes to each other, as well as a partial view of Kaminari's note on Ayama's desk. Once he was back in his own seat he wrote the messages down before he could forget them. Tape Fa, Siro's note is, Midoriya is not stressed about the assignment at all. He hasn't started muttering once. Shitty hairs is something about ears having a song stuck in her head. Ears is about how clothes fidgets a lot. Apparently nobody notices because she's invisible but she is just loud enough for ears to hear. Clothes? Yeah, the fucking invisible idiot. All you can see are her fucking clothes. Okay, I guess, is that everyone you figured out? No, Octo Arm's message has something to do with Pinky learning by talking. And Sparkle's message is about Tail being uncomfortable. Awesome, I figured out Hagakira and Ajiro's messages, and part of Kaminari's message. There are 10 minutes of class left, just like you did last time. Fill out the quiz and write all the messages on the back. Aizawa handed out the quizzes. Just like last time both Izuku and Katsuki rushed to fill out the front and then moved to the back. Shit neither of us came up with messages. I have one, Mr. Aizawa is Shinsu's adopted dad. Shinsu overdid his quirk this morning while training and has a headache. Aizawa is more worried about him than he would be about any of the rest of us. Shinsu has also mentioned that he is adopted and seems closer to present Mike and Mr. Aizawa than a normal student would be. Are you sure that you want that to be your message after last time? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's true and I think Shinsu and I are pretty good friends so I don't think he would mind me knowing. Besides, the only other things I can think of without someone. Quick, what is your message? Katsuki looked around quickly. Almost immediately his eyes landed on Kirishima. The raid a few weeks ago made Kirishima homesick. He is constantly looking out the window while messing with the wristband his moms gave him. The girl that was rescued reminds him of his little sister. Izuku didn't have time to react to that, but he couldn't help but worry about Kirishima. That raid affected all of them but he didn't realize that Kirishima was affected enough for Katsuki to mention it. Shaking his head, he brought himself back to focus and started writing. After they both quickly wrote down both of their messages, Izuku went through the list he had written of all of their classmates' messages. 
just like he had done before. Izuku translated each message and told Katsuki the message so they could both write it down on the quiz. Izuku looked over the messages before he turned it in and he noticed a couple things. They had managed to figure out at least part of almost every person's message in their class. Somehow they only didn't get Yuraraka and Yeyurazu's messages. He also noticed that he was actually in quite a few people's observations, and he wasn't sure what he thought about that. As he turned and he quickly counted how many he figured out. Kaken, I won again. Izuku grinned. No way shitty Deku. Yes I did. I figured out nine. You only figured out seven. Damn it. Aizawa wasn't expecting to figure out exactly how Bakugu and Midoriya were communicating. But he had hoped to at least figure out something. As he sat to write down all his observations he again had nothing to write down for his problem duo. Although, surprisingly he didn't have much to write down at all. In fact, he hadn't managed to figure out a single full message. The closest he got to a full message was the notes he saw being passed between Hagakira and Ajira. But while he had seen most of the note, he hadn't seen the full thing. He also saw parts of Aoyama, Kaminari, Shouji and Jiru's messages but it was even less than Hagakira and Ajiro. Other than that he heard tapping from Ashido, Asui, Todoroki, and Ida, but he hadn't figured out the messages. For a large chunk of the class, he didn't have anything. He did see Shinsu and Kuda moving their hands, but he didn't recognize what it meant at all. He wouldn't admit it to anyone, but Aizawa was actually really proud of his students. He wrote what little bit he had figured out down, and then went on to grading. As he made his way through the quizzes he became more and more concerned for his students, as well as annoyed at himself. This had little to do with the scores, a good chunk of the class had done pretty well. Majority of them improved their scores, probably not as much as they would have liked, but at least they improved. There were a few students that did worse this time around, but the majority of them had good scores to begin with so Aizawa didn't worry about them. What concerned him was some of the messages, one of which related directly to the lowest score in the class. He had asked his students to observe each other and he wasn't sure that he was happy with what they realized. It wasn't that he thought his students didn't do a good job. Many of the observations were accurate and went beyond surface level. He was upset that he hadn't made these same observations. Reading Yuraka's message really put Sadu's low score in perspective. Her message was, Sadu had a bit too much sugar at lunch. He almost broke his pencil and hasn't written much in his notes. Aizawa hadn't noticed it. But looking at Sadu's quiz, it was apparent that Yuraka was correct. He barely wrote anything, and what he did write was barely legible. Honestly, it was impressive that he managed to get any points in that state, but he did get the lowest score in the class this time around, a meager 10 points. Luckily he could go by his first score, which was a whole 34 points higher. This meant that he had the sixth lowest score instead of the actual lowest, but it was worrying. At this point in the school year Aizawa knew Sadu well enough to know that he wouldn't purposefully eat too much sugar before an important assignment, which means that it truly was an accident. If that's the case, how often does this happen? Does Sadu regularly struggle in afternoon classes because of his sugar intake at lunch? Aizawa pulled out another piece of paper and made a note on it to talk to Sadu about it. And then he went through the rest of the assignments, looking more closely at their messages to see if he needed to speak to more students. Unfortunately Sadu wasn't the only one. Shaoji noticed that Ashido learns by repeating everything. If that is the case then that is probably why she is always either whispering during class or not paying attention. Jiru noticed that Hagakir fidgets a lot, which means that she could probably benefit from some sort of fidget device, although truthfully, so could most of the class. He hadn't noticed Hagakir fidget at all, she obviously took advantage of her invisibility to hide it, but he had noticed many other students fidget quite a bit. Shinsu figured out that Kaminari struggles with how his quirk affects his brain. It actually wasn't surprising that Shinsu noticed that one, or that Kaminari's quirk affected his brain. Aizawa had actually been meaning to talk to Kaminari about it for a while. But he hadn't been able to yet, and Shinsu seemed to pay close attention to Kaminari. Yeyurazu noticed that Dark Shadow acts out when Takoyami is stressed, while Asui noticed that Dark Shadow acts out when she is bored. Aizawa was really upset that he didn't notice that. If that was true then Takoyami must spend a lot of his time in class just trying to get Dark Shadow to not act out. Aoyama's message said that Ajiro's tail doesn't fit comfortably in his chair, which seems obvious in hindsight. The desks were made to be as inclusive as possible, but even then, there is no way to account for every quirk. Ajiro's message about Aoyama was concerning, but he hoped that it wasn't something major. He said that Aoyama was hiding something behind his smile and honestly, Aizawa saw it. For all that Aoyama sparkled, his eyes weren't as bright. Hagakir brought up that Shouji hunched over a lot to allow the people behind him to see. It was probably the most obvious observation, and his biggest oversight. 
Every class was seated in order, without any regard for the students' heights. Xiaoji is the tallest in the class and he has extra limbs that make him bulkier than most people. But he is sitting in front of one of the shortest people in the class. Bakugu's message about Kirishima being upset after the raid really worried Aizawa. He had been paying close attention to the students that were a part of the raid. He would be a negligent teacher if he didn't, and he had noticed that Kirishima was still struggling a bit from the raid, all the students were. But he hadn't noticed exactly why Kirishima was struggling. He had assumed it was because of his fight with Rappa and the general raid. He had no idea of any similarities to his family. He also noted to talk to the problem duo again. Midoriya's message was concerning in an entirely different way. Yet again the boy had managed to figure out something about Aizawa's own family. Knowing the impression Midoriya had made on his family, he doubted any of them would be upset with him for knowing, but Shinsu might mind that Bakugu knows. When Shinsu first joined the class he was hesitant to be friends with anyone, but Midoriya and Kaminari were determined. Aizawa didn't know the details but Midoriya and Shinsu bonded and now Shinsu asked Midoriya to join their training regularly. Unsurprisingly, Shinsu has not warmed up to Bakugu the same way. Shinsu hates the way Bakugu treats Midoriya and refuses to be civil towards him. Bakugu doesn't seem to have anything against Shinsu, but he is abrasive and insulting toward everyone. Looking back over his long list of students to talk to, Aizawa sighed. It was going to be a long Monday afternoon. He thought back to the conversation with Bakugu and Midoriya after the last assignment and decided to cross them off his list. Instead he wrote a message on their quizzes, reminding them of their conversation about how dangerous information about heroes' families can be. Ideally he would have gotten confirmation from them that they would keep the information private, but he didn't have the time. Besides, it seemed that they were better at keeping secrets than anyone would have thought. As Aizawa finished his grading he looked back over the problem duo's quizzes. The amount of writing on the back was honestly impressive. They had figured out less complete messages than last time, but they had some information from almost all of their classmates, and none of their classmates had any information from them. It was scary how identical their papers were. It really showed how exact their way of communicating was. Even the guesses and partial messages were phrased the same. There wasn't a single word that was different on the page. He was going to look over the quizzes again, just to make sure that he had identified all of the worrying messages when he got a glimpse of the time. Instead of looking through the quizzes, he sighed and began to pack up. Every Friday afternoon, evening they had a teacher meeting. This meeting was usually really boring. Every teacher in the school was required to attend and the majority of the meeting was just Nedzu explaining any changes that occurred in the past week that would affect everyone. It wasn't anything like the lively meeting the week before that had been to discuss the assignment. The only people that were required to be at that meeting were Aizawa and Vlad King. Everyone else was there because they wanted to be, meaning that the teachers that don't interact with the hero course usually didn't go. Everyone who teaches at UA was required to go to this meeting, so to not waste time they didn't discuss anything that wasn't relevant to all the courses. If there was something that was relevant to only a specific course they would have a separate meeting after this one. Fortunately, this week did not have an extra hero course meeting so Aizawa was looking forward to the extra time with his family tonight. Aizawa made his way to the designated auditorium and snagged a chair beside his husband. Before long Nedzu was standing on stage at the front talking into the microphone. Aizawa tried to listen, but Nedzu had a tendency to ramble. Instead he found himself fighting sleep. He wanted to fall asleep on his husband's shoulder, but the information about his family hadn't made it beyond the hero course, and while he trusted all of the teachers at this school, it was a lot easier for them not to know. Aizawa continued to fight off sleep as Nedzu rambled until he heard Nedzu say something that caught his attention. Now as we wrap up this meeting I would like to take a few minutes to start a new tradition. Although we are one school I find that we do not act like it. Each course is barely connected to each other. To remedy this, I will announce any accomplishments from each course from the past week so that we may celebrate together. Aizawa hid a smile in his capture weapon. As a hero whose main offense is a support item he always thought that there should be more connections made between the courses. This won't fix that, but creating more camaraderie between the teachers will help. To start, Nedzu started listing off different accomplishments from each course but Aizawa was only vaguely listening. It had been a long week and he was ready to go home. His attention however was caught when Nedzu suddenly mentioned his name. Aizawa and Vlad King's classes completed the second iteration of one of the most important assignments in the hero course. Two of Aizawa's students beat the record for the highest score last week in the first iteration and I believe that they beat their previous score today, although I must admit, I do not actually know their score from today. Aizawa, would you enlighten us? If Aizawa had been closer he would have seen the glint in Nedzu's eye, but even from where he was, he knew it was there. 170 he grunted with his face still buried in his scarf. He didn't bother to yell, he knew Nedzu had great hearing and he was going to repeat it anyway. 170. Their score last week was 165, 
and the previous record that had been made after multiple iterations was only 134. Incredible, I wish I knew how they did it. Well, that is the end of our meeting today. Have a great weekend. Nedzu grinned as no one moved. Aizawa groaned as whispers broke out among the teachers, by implying that even he was stumped by something. Nedzu had made sure that the whole room was in tree. What kind of assignment was it? A teacher spoke up from the back. Nedzu's grin widened. It was a communication assignment. Each student had to get a message to their partner without anyone else figuring it out. They were graded on how well they received their partner's message and transmitted their message. They also gained points based on what messages they were able to intercept and lost points for people intercepting their message. DSH, isn't it a requirement to be a teacher to notice when your students are communicating right in front of you? What could two students possibly be doing that you can't see? Aizawa is probably just playing favorites. A teacher from the business course got up to speak and then started moving toward the exit. Some other teachers from the business course and the general course started to follow. But before any of them made it far Nenzu said something that stopped them in their tracks. Playing favorites wouldn't be rational so that is unlikely. Additionally I can confirm that they did deserve their scores from the first iteration. We watched a recording of the class last week, and I have seen it many times since, and I am flummoxed. Truthfully, I am rather excited to watch today's class to see if I can come up with any more insight. Nedzu stood at the front silently, as if he was waiting for something for a long moment. The teachers that had started to leave sat down, but Nedzu continued to wait. Aizawa was pretty sure that he was waiting for so he pulled out Bakugu's paper and turned to his husband. Nedzu is going to want to pull up the footage now. He pointed to where Midoriya's message was written on the paper. I can come up with an excuse if I need to. He wasn't worried about the majority of the message. When Shinsu had transferred to the hero course Aizawa had disclosed their connection to make sure that there would be no accusations of favoritism later. However the last part of the message implied his connection to present Mike, which wasn't public knowledge. Present Mike looked over the message in question. Why does the little listener have to be so dang observant? He sighed and looked his husband in the eye. Shu, you know that I would scream it from the rooftops if I could. I trust everyone here. I don't mind if you don't. Aizawa smiled softly into his capture weapon as he turned his attention back to where Nedzu was still waiting on stage. Finally a general course teacher yelled out, Just play the video already. Well if you insist, Aizawa do you have any objections? Nedzu was grinning way too much for this to have not been his plan all along. Aizawa just sighed and made his way up to the front with Bakugu's paper. He knew that Nedzu would request it anyway. Nedzu pulled up the video and got the projector ready to pull up Bakugu's quiz while speaking. Before we begin I will explain the assignment and how it was graded a little bit more. Last week the students all chose partners. They were tasked today with transmitting a message to their partner without anyone else figuring it out. The message had to be based on their prompt, although, I don't see a prompt written on this quiz like it was last time. Nedzu looked at Aizawa. Everyone had the same prompt this time. They were told to observe something about someone in the room. Aizawa grunted before making his way back to his seat. Ah, interesting, Nedzu said almost to himself although it was picked up by the microphone that he had been speaking and at the end of class each student has to fill out a quiz. The front is a pretty standard quiz about what had been covered during the lesson. The student is graded on this and can get up to 90 points for it. On the back they first write down their message and their partner's message. They are awarded up to 5 points based on how accurately the message they received matches what was transmitted and up to another 5 points according to how accurately their partner received the message they transmitted. Finally, they write down any other messages that they figured out, even partially. These are given point values similar to how the partner messages were, with an exact message being worth 5 points while less accurate messages would be worth less. Those point values are then added to that student's score and subtracted from the score of the student who transmitted it. For extra points, each student's message is evaluated for complexity, and they can earn up to 5 points extra for having a complicated message. Nenzu looked around the room for a moment before pulling up Bakugu's quiz. Now the students in question are Bakugu and Midoriya. Nenzu zoomed in on the two of them in the not-yet-started video. Wait, aren't those the two students that fought in Ground Beta? The two that are infamous for hating each other. A business course teacher yelled out as many teachers looked around and whispered in confusion. The duo's fight was infamous for all the headaches it had caused. Yes, that is a part of the reason for our confusion. Nenzu zoomed back out of the video. Having wasted enough time already, Nenzu hit play. Just like last time both boys looked as though they were paying full attention to the lecture. A few minutes into class however Midoriya pulled out his second notebook, the one that he writes in code. What is he writing? Someone asked. Aizawa didn't bother to see who. He was more focused on watching the video. He did the same thing last time. We believe that he is writing his classmates' messages in some kind of code. Nedzu responded without looking away from the video. After Midoriya finished writing he studied what he had written. 
It looked almost as though he was trying to decipher his own writing. The heroes all understood why. They had heard Todoroki tapping and had attempted to decode the Morse code just like Aizawa had attempted during class. They had all been required to learn standard Morse code before they graduated. However, it wasn't standard Morse code. They had changed it to make it less obvious. As all the teachers watched Midoriya wrote another message. This one tapped out by Ida. He kept taking notes on the lecture, but he kept staring at the page. Suddenly he wrote out two more messages. But these two messages were written out quickly, not slowly like the ones before where he was having to translate it from Morse code. He wrote the messages as though someone was telling them directly to him. Aizawa would have assumed that the two new messages were just the decoded messages from before, except he had also heard the other tapping, and Midoriya was still staring at Todoroki and Ida's messages. It was also interesting to watch Midoriya's face as he wrote one of the messages. For a split second, he looked almost offended. Aizawa glanced at the messages on the back of Bakugu's quiz. Based on Midoriya's reaction, he had probably just written down Ashido's message. Not long after that, Midoriya was shaking. He was smiling as he wrote down the next message obviously holding back laughter. On the opposite page in his notebook he quickly scribbled out another message before going back to the page where he had the rest of the messages. Midoriya kept a small smile on his face as Bakugu chuckled, and Aizawa smiled softly with them. Aizawa wouldn't admit it to anyone, but he was awfully fond of this class and it was nice to see his problem duo getting along, even if it was just quietly laughing in class. Barely a minute later, both of their faces fell. They went from being lighthearted to serious in an instant. Bakugu started looking a bit uncomfortable, but there still was no indication of how they were communicating, even though it was obvious that they were communicating in some way. As Kaminari made a ruckus and started coughing, Aizawa kept his eyes on the problem duo, but they didn't do anything interesting. He did notice though that Midoriya had the same very reflective water bottle on his desk as he did during the assignment last week. When Shinsu was called out for his hand motions Midoriya didn't take his eyes off of it, and then he wrote down what Aizawa assumed was Shinsu's message. Aizawa kept his face buried in his capture weapon to hide his proud grin at his students' ingenuity, using his water bottle as a mirror. American Sign Language, really? Aizawa heard his husband say under his breath. Aizawa was a little less impressed with his son. He had hoped that Shinsu and Kuda had made up their own version of sign language. However, it now made more sense that Midoriya knew it. He had no idea Midoriya knew ASL, but it made more sense than him knowing a language made up by his classmates. After Midoriya finished writing, Aizawa's attention was drawn to Bakugu. He looked annoyed, and surprisingly, hurt. Looking back at the quiz and at Kuda and Shinsu's messages it made more sense. Their messages had been about his friends. The commotion caused by Kirishima and Dark Shadow's quick trip across the room showed how more messages were exchanged, but there was still nothing that explained how the duo were communicating. At least, until Midoriya got up, walked to the front of the class, and sneezed, over and over again. The sneezes. Nedzu rewinded the video to replay Midoriya's sneezes. It's Morse code. Nedzu's grin was terrifying. But it fell as Midoriya finished sneezing. Never mind. Nedzu mumbled under his breath just barely loud enough for the microphone to pick up. It was just sneeze. What? A general education course teacher yelled. Aizawa was barely holding back laughter. While many of the hero course teachers didn't bother to hold back. Many teachers from other courses looked around bewildered at the hero course teachers laughing. The heroes all figured out what Midoriya had said, which was literally, sneeze. Nedzu explained what Midoriya had said to the other teachers, but Aizawa wasn't listening. He was too busy watching the problem duo. After watching them as closely as he had been it was apparent that Midoriya didn't cause a disruption to allow them to communicate. They had been doing that all along. Aizawa watched them to see what the reasoning was, and he was impressed when he found out. The distraction kept all eyes on them, so no one was paying attention to their own papers. Majority of them had their message and their partner's message sitting on their desk. Midoriya and Bakugu used their distraction as a way to read them. Sure enough, when Midoriya sat back down he started writing furiously. Just as he finished writing, the last ten minutes hit. Both boys rushed through the front of the quiz easily. They had been taking diligent notes the whole time. When they reached the back though, they paused. After a moment they wrote down Midoriya's message. Many teachers side-eyed Aizawa and present Mike at that, but only for a moment. The whole room was intrigued by the synchronized writing. They were especially interested as they both paused so that Bakugu could look around frantically. Almost as soon as his eyes stopped on Kirishima, both boys started writing again. When they moved on to their classmates' messages Midoriya pulled his coded notebook toward himself, and they both wrote as if he was reading it aloud. Nedzu stopped the video when the papers were turned in. Most of the teachers turned their attention to the quiz, looking more at what was written. Aizawa was more interested in the paused video image. Both boys' faces were left on the screen. 
Midoriya had a large grin stretched across his face, but what really caught Aizawa's attention was Bakugu's face. To most of the teachers in the room it would look like he is annoyed. But Aizawa knew him well enough to see something different in his eyes. If he didn't know any better, he would swear it was fondness. Whatever it was, it was unmistakably directed at Midoriya. They're telepathic, that's the only explanation. I have been a teacher for longer than most of you have been alive and I have seen my fair share of students communicating during class, all kinds of different codes and passing notes. But I have never seen anything like that before. An ancient-looking business course teacher spoke up. His comment broke the silence. Teachers all around the room started talking, adding in their own two cents about what was happening. Someone yelled out that both boys' quirks had been showcased in the sports festival and had been seen many times since. There was no way that they were telepathic. As arguments broke out from teachers trying to theorize, Nedzu calmly ended the meeting and packed up before heading towards Aizawa. I don't think we will be gaining any insight from them, Nedzu said as he approached. Then what was the point of this whole thing? Aizawa was suddenly very annoyed. He was excited to spend some free time with his family tonight. But instead they stayed late to watch the video of class. If there wasn't a reason for it then what was the point of sacrificing his evening? Extra eyes of course. There was a mischievous glint in Nedzu's eye. Every teacher in the school will be watching them like a hawk. Either someone will figure out how they are doing it, or they will break under the pressure. Either way, we will figure it out. Aizawa shook his head as the principal walked away. For some reason, he didn't like the idea of his students breaking. Katsuki left class after the assignment with a mission. After his conversation with Izuku during class, and after some of the messages, he realized that his idiots might actually think he thinks of them as idiots. Izuku was right. They are his friends. Katsuki has just been reluctant to think of them as that because he cares about them differently than he cares about Izuku. But apparently that distinction can be made as friends versus best friend rather than idiots versus friend. He had no clue how he was going to go about it. But his mission was to make sure his friends knew that he doesn't actually think that they are idiots. Katsuki also decided that he was going to call them by their names. Nicknames had always been his thing. It started out because he is terrible about learning names. But it evolved from there. Once he respects someone he remembers their name, but that doesn't mean that he uses it. It's partially a habit, partially because he doesn't want to admit that he respects them, but he hates to admit it. It is mostly because he likes calling people by a name that only he uses. Katsuki got in the habit of saying the opposite of what he meant. He regularly called Izuku stupid when he is actually one of the smartest people he knows. He likes to call his friends idiots when that is far from the truth. He always assumed that people knew what he meant, but they had no reason to. He and Izuku had been friends for years and they have talked about it extensively, but somehow Katsuki assumed that everyone knew him as well as Izuku does. He likes having his nicknames for his friends, but if they don't like them or are insulted by them, he won't use them. Katsuki was enough of a bully all through elementary and middle school. He doesn't need to be a bully now. With that in mind Katsuki left class to find his friends. Entering the dorm it wasn't hard to locate his friends. They are often found in the common room and they are far from quiet. As he entered the room, they didn't hesitate before calling him over. Hey Bakugu, come sit with us. Kirishima grinned and motioned to the seat next to him on the sofa. Yeah, we were just talking about how much better that assignment went. Siro said from where he lounged on the floor in front of the recliner with his head in Kaminari's lap. Mina was lounging sideways in the recliner, with her head hanging over the armrest. Katsuki sat down in the seat that Kirishima offered, only to find his lap full of the other boy's legs a second later. He stopped himself from pushing Kirishima's legs off of him, it was a reflex, but honestly he didn't mind it much. You know, I feel like I did a lot better this time around, but I still don't think I did good. Like I didn't figure out many people's messages, but I don't think as many people figured out my message either. And like, I know I did better on the quiz, I mean I actually answered something this time, but I've never been good at quizzes to begin with. Kaminari spoke as he played with Siro's hair. Ugh, I know what you mean. Like I know I did better, but I'm pretty sure I didn't do good. Ashido groaned. Kirishima and Siro both voiced their agreement as well and Katsuki found himself feeling bad for them. If class today had gone differently, Katsuki might have made a joke at their expense, thinking that they wouldn't have been upset by it. But now he knew that it might actually hurt them. He had no idea how to be comforting, but his friends deserved that he would at least try. Improvement is really what they are looking for. I mean, fuck. They are having us do this assignment multiple times. We might not have the opportunity to replace our grade again but there is no way this will be the last attempt. They don't expect anyone to do well. I would guess that they have set up grading so that it won't hurt your overall grade too badly. Easy for you to say. I heard from Tetsu Tetsu that you and Midoriya got the highest scores ever. Kirishima said lightheartedly. What? Mina, Kaminari, and Siro all practically yelled at once. Katsuki sighed. Yeah, but the only reason we were even fucking told about that is because they were checking to make sure that we didn't have a fucking telepathy quirk or something. Holy shit, 
They thought you two had a secret telepathy quirk. What the heck was your score? Mina sat up and turned to look at him. 165. But that's not the fucking point. Your scores were a lot more expected than mine. They're asking us to do three things at once, and all of those three things could be a major fucking challenge all on its own. Deku and I did well partially because we have known each other since we were in fucking diapers. But you hate him. Mina almost smacked Kaminari with her aggressive arm motions. I know him, that doesn't change no matter what I fucking feel about him. Katsuki almost denied that he hated Izuku, but he couldn't, not to them, not yet. Dude, it's super manly that you are trying to make us feel better, but it's really not working for you. There's not much you can say after you got the highest score ever on your first attempt. Yeah dude, why are you trying to make us feel better anyway? Usually you would just say it's your own damn fault. You should have studied more. Or made a joke mocking us or something. Are you okay? Katsuki immediately felt guilty. He knew that's what he would normally do. And he had come to the realization that he was being mean earlier. But hearing Kaminari say it like that really drove the point home. He sighed as he tried to find the words for what he wanted to say. During the assignment today I. Fuck. Deku and I figured out the majority of the messages in the class, or at least parts of them anyway. There were a few messages that, fuck, they made me realize how much of an asshole I was being. Katsuki looked around at all his friends. Siro had sat up to look at him better once he realized how serious Katsuki was. Mina and Kaminari both were facing him the best they could. Hiroshima even tried to pull his feet away so that he could sit up and really pay attention to what he was saying. But Katsuki didn't let him. The weight of his friend's legs on his lap helped him focus himself so he could start talking. He sighed. I say the opposite of what I mean all the fucking time and I thought you all understood that. Katsuki could tell that they were all about to argue so he quickly continued. You might all understand that, but you don't deserve to be torn down all the time anyway. I call you my idiots all the time, but I don't actually think that you are idiots. Yeah, you might not score very highly in academics, but you made it into the top hero school in the world and there is no way in hell I would be friends with anyone that isn't a badass. So I guess this is an apology. Katsuki looked each of his friends in the eye in turn. Hiroshima, Mina, Kaminari, Siro I'm sorry I've been an ass, I'll try and be nicer or whatever, and Katsuki looked down and played with his hands, I'll drop the nicknames. Fuck no, Mina yelled, causing all of the boys to turn to stare at her. I mean I appreciate your apology, and it was exactly what I needed to hear right now to make me feel better. But, you cannot get rid of the nicknames and you better not become super nice or anything. I don't mind being called an idiot when I know you don't mean it and Pinky is literally my hero name. Raccoon eyes is a little insulting which is why no one except you is allowed to say it but, I don't know, it makes me feel kinda special to have a nickname from you. Yeah, I mean I always thought of you calling me shitty hair as an inside joke cause you don't think my hair is actually shitty. Right, Hiroshima was smiling at Katsuki when he started talking. But as he asked for confirmation he averted his eyes to the floor and scratched at his neck. No fucking shit, your hair is literally just like mine except red, obviously I don't actually think it's shitty. Katsuki would have smacked Kirishima in the head like he had gotten in the habit of, but he was a bit out of arm's reach. He was going to smack his leg instead. But he realized that hitting his friends goes against what he was just saying. I like the idea of having a nickname too, but I'm not a huge fan of Dunn's face. Kaminari hunched into himself a bit. Well then what do you want me to call you? Sparky, Sparkplug, Chargebolt, Pikachu. As soon as Katsuki said Pikachu, Kaminari's face lit up. Pikachu, you would seriously call me Pikachu. Kaminari looked at Katsuki with wide hopeful eyes. I fucking said it didn't I. Kaminari lit up in a way that Katsuki had never seen before. He couldn't hold back his own grin. It felt good to make his friend happy. I also would like a nickname. Not tape face though please. Siro looked between Katsuki and Kaminari hopefully. Office supplies, scotch tape, elbows, tapeman, flex tape, daft punk, tape punk, cellophane Katsuki threw his hand up. Any of these sounding good? Daft punk, tape punk what? Siro looked so confused. Your hero costume helmet looks like Daft Punk. Your quirk is tape. It's not that fucking hard to understand. Katsuki deadpanned. He really didn't see what was confusing about it. Siro looked up Daft Punk on his phone. Holy shit, I never realized. My helmet does look like one of the guys in Daft Punk. Holy shit. Siro grinned. Tape Punk sounds awesome. Katsuki rolled his eyes at Siro's enthusiasm but couldn't hold back his grin. Wait, you have nicknames for all of us so we should have a nickname for you. I vote Blasty. Mina clapped her hands in excitement. Blasty, really? Katsuki wasn't sure how he felt about the nickname. But when he looked at all of his friends' faces, he saw them looking at him with wide hopeful eyes and expectant smiles, and he couldn't help but to cave. Fine, you can call me Blasty. His friends all started cheering and he couldn't help but smile along with them. Okay, okay. Now that that's all settled and you made us all feel better let's go back to the important topic. 
How the heck did you and Midoriya get the highest scores ever? Mina was a little louder than she probably needed to be, which was pretty normal for her. Except she managed to time it perfectly when Izuku, Yuraka, and Ida walked into the room. What? You got the highest score ever? Yuraka shrieked while turning to face Izuku. Izuku looked around the room frantically before his eyes landed on Katsuki. You told them. Hell no. The metal extra from the other class told shitty hair. Shoot, why didn't we realize this would happen? I knew Kirishima is friends with Tetsu Tetsu. It doesn't fucking matter anymore. I thought I got them to fuck off about it when I told them we've known each other since we were in diapers, but obviously fucking not. Izuku turned back to his friends, only to find all of them staring at him. He scratched the back of his neck. Ooh, yeah, Kaken and I have known each other since we were babies. Izuku shrugged. We had a bit of an advantage. A bit of an advantage, a bit. A bit of an advantage doesn't explain getting a score of 165. Mina fell back into the chair dramatically. 165. I thought my score of 101 was impressive. I must admit, I had a hunch that you and Bakugo are closer than any of us realize. But this is far beyond what I expected. Ada looked between the two boys in question. Katsuki stood up so he could see everyone he was talking to. Alright, listen up fuckers. Deku and I have known each other for fucking years. Regardless of how close we are or whatever, we fucking understand each other. Also that fucker is way too good with languages and none of you are exactly subtle about your damn messages. Hey, I thought I did good today. Your Raka pouted. Congrats Pink Cheeks. You and Ponytail were the only two whose messages we didn't know shit about today. Katsuki deadpanned. He was done with emotions after the conversation he had just had with his friends. Kaminari waved his hands between Katsuki and Izuku. Are we just ignoring that Blasty complimented Midoriya? Shut the fuck up Pikachu. Whatever. We have fucking training to do. Katsuki stormed out of the room, dragging Izuku along with him. He wasn't lying. They really did have plans to train together, but they usually tried not to advertise that to their classmates. Izuku was silent as Katsuki dragged him away. They separated in the hallway without a word, before meeting up again at the front door, dressed ready to work out. Izuku wanted to say something as they walked toward the gym that they liked to use, but he didn't know what to say. He was going to call Katsuki out on their abrupt departure, but he thought better of it. He didn't know why, but something was obviously bothering Katsuki. Surprisingly it was Katsuki who broke the silence as they neared the gym. Damn it. What? Are you okay? Izuku was concerned. Fuck. I just got done telling my fucking friends that I'm gonna try and be fucking nicer or whatever and then I did that shit. What the fuck kind of friend am I? Katsuki kicked at the dirt as they walked. Kaken, do you think I'm a good friend? Izuku looked at Katsuki out of the corner of his eye. What the fuck kind of question is that? Of course you're a good friend. Hell you put up with my shit for all these years and you've managed to befriend our whole damn class. But I've lashed out like that before. Izuku continued to look ahead instead of directly at Katsuki. Katsuki stopped walking and turned to stand in front of Izuku. What? I mean, it doesn't happen often but it has happened. Kaken, everyone has a breaking point. A point where their patience fails. Some people reach that point quickly. Other people take a long time to get to that point. Reaching that point doesn't make you a bad friend Kaken. Izuku reached out to put his hand on Katsuki's shoulder, it makes you human. What would make you a bad friend is if you didn't feel bad about it. After we finish here, go and apologize, and try to avoid lashing out in the future. Your friends care about you, they'll understand. Katsuki just stared at Izuku for a moment before pulling away and turning to continue walking to the gym. TCH, let's go. I wanna fucking punch something. Okay, race ya. Izuku took off before he finished what he was saying. He knew Katsuki always felt better after a little competition. Just like he expected, Katsuki chased after him, not wanting to ruin Katsuki's mood even more. Izuku slowed a bit so that Katsuki had a chance to catch up. To his surprise as soon as Katsuki caught up to him, he pushed him off balance. Izuku laughed and sped up to catch up to Katsuki. Once he did, he returned the push. The rest of the race continued similarly. They took turns pushing each other and racing ahead, laughing the whole time. By the time they reached the gym they were out of breath, both from running and from laughing. They continued to good-naturedly shove each other until they actually started their training with smiles on their faces. Training went well for them. They started with a dynamic warm-up before moving on to some weight training and then ended with quirkless sparring, their usual training routine. Occasionally they will get All Might to join them for the sparring so that they could use quirks. But he had a meeting every Friday that made it so he couldn't come. They didn't talk much on the way back to the dorm after showering and changing in the locker room. Izuku was lost in his thoughts about how his friends all knew how well he did on the assignment. It wasn't that he wanted them to think he did badly or anything like that. He just didn't want to answer their questions. They also aren't big fans of Katsuki, and Izuku really didn't want to hear any of their comments about it. When they finally made it into the dorm, Izuku headed up to his room. As he reached the stairs he saw Katsuki beeline towards his friends and he smiled sadly. 
He was really happy that Katsuki had friends that he was willing to be honest with and try to be nice to. But Izuku was a little jealous. Katsuki and him were making progress in their relationship. But he doubted Katsuki would stop being mean to him. He knows that Katsuki doesn't mean it. It was the plan they came up with together all those years ago and he thought that he was fine with it. But seeing Katsuki work so hard on his other friendships hurt a bit. Katsuki thought about what he was going to say to apologize for the entire walk back to the dorms. As soon as he got inside, he rushed over to where his friends were all hanging out around the TV. Catching their attention he started his apology. I, fuck, I'm really sorry for earlier. Dude you have nothing to apologize for. I pushed too far, that's on me. I'm the one who is sorry. Kaminari barely let him start. Yeah, and I'm sorry too. I shouldn't have brought up the conversation in the first place. You and Midoriya obviously wanted to keep your scores private but instead I announced it to everyone. Nina spoke up immediately after Kaminari. Katsuki looked at the two of them in confusion. He was expecting them to be upset at him, not for them to be apologizing to him. We were talking about it after you left. This being nicer thing is a two-way street. It's not manly for us to push past your boundaries like that. Hiroshima added. Yeah dude. Siro paused for a second like he was expecting Katsuki to say something. But he must have seen how uncomfortable Katsuki had gotten with the whole conversation because he changed the subject. We were about to start a smash tournament. You in? Siro held out a switch controller. Fuck yeah, you fuckers are going down. Katsuki took the offered controller and sat down with his friends. Izuku wished that he could say that the assignment wasn't brought up the rest of the weekend. But that seemed to be the only thing some of his friends would talk about. By Saturday morning the news had spread to everyone in the class about Katsuki and his scores on the first iteration. For the most part the rest of his classmates didn't bother him about it. But the same couldn't be said about his friends. Some of his friends were calm about it, but others weren't. Ada didn't care much about his score after the initial conversation on Friday. He was more interested in how to improve. He wanted to know any tips that Izuku could give, seeing that Izuku had gotten such a high score and he had figured out Ida's message. Meanwhile Todoroki took advantage of the fact that Izuku had figured out his message to talk to him about it while also asking for some tips similar to Izuku didn't mind talking to them about it. They respected that he didn't want to talk about certain things so they didn't ask about them. Sue wasn't the worst to talk to, but she didn't shy away from questions he didn't want to answer. Like usual, she was blunt and would ask whatever questions that she came up with. She had no issues with him not answering, but Izuku felt a bit awkward anyway. Iraraka was by far the worst. She constantly asked him how he and Katsuki communicated and what other people's messages were. She also kept pestering him about how he could possibly work with Katsuki. He had no idea how to answer her. He was tired of hearing his best friend get insulted over and over again, and she was refusing to stop asking, so he just started avoiding her. Shinsu probably had his favorite reaction though, so he spent most of the weekend with him. When he first found out Shinsu asked Izuku for a few tips, but after that one short conversation he didn't mention it again. Izuku could hang out with him and forget about the assignment, so that's what he did for the entire weekend. The only time he spent with anyone else was the class movie night, but he showed up right when the movie started and left right when it ended as to not give anyone time to talk to him about it. All weekend he wished he was like Katsuki, who hadn't been questioned at all after he lashed out during that initial conversation. He may have told Katsuki that he lashes out sometimes, but he does his absolute best to avoid it. Izuku always expects that his friends will leave him. That's all he's ever known, so he can't lash out and give them a reason to go. Monday morning came and he knew that he couldn't avoid it anymore. He walked into class dreading the comments he was surely going to get after the quizzes were handed back. I have your grades back from the assignment on Friday. Majority of you did improve your score so this new score will replace the old one. If you did do worse this time around, don't worry, you get to keep your old score. Just like last time I will be giving the same lecture again today during Foundational Heroics. If you got above a 75 on the quiz portion you have the option to attend a practical lesson with All Might instead. Just like Izuku expected, Aizawa started out class talking about their scores on the assignment. Before I hand these back I would like to talk about a few things. First, some of these messages touch on things that people may not want talked about or spread around. Part of being a hero is recognizing what information should remain private. Respect your classmates and do not bring up anything that they are not comfortable sharing. The second thing I would like to mention is that while there will not be another assignment just like this one to replace your scores, there will be similar assignments in the future. If you did not score well, continue to think about how you can improve, but don't worry about it too much. There will be ample opportunities to bring your final grade up. As soon as Aizawa finished speaking he handed the quizzes back. Upon seeing his paper, Izuku started a silent conversation with Katsuki. 170. Kaken we got 170, we beat our other record. Of course we did, we fucking killed it. 
Izuku read the little note at the top of his paper but he didn't bother to mention it to Katsuki. He probably had the same note anyway. It said to remember what they talked about surrounding privacy after the last assignment. With that reminder plus the reminder before he handed out the papers, it was obvious that Aizawa was worried about information being spread. After Aizawa finished handing out the papers he crawled into his sleeping bag for a nap. The class was used to that by now. They knew that as long as they weren't too loud they could talk and hang out until the end of the class period. As soon as Aizawa was in his sleeping bag Yuraka was rushing across the room. As soon as she was close enough to Izuku, she grabbed his paper out of his hands. 170, she announced, catching the attention of the entire room as she flipped to the back as if she was going to read the messages there. But before she could Izuku snatched it. Yuraka, were you not listening to Aizawa? I just wanted to see how you got such a high score. Yuraka tried to grab the paper back. Besides, it's not like your score was personal information. Izuku darted away to the other side of the classroom. The whole conversation had been loud enough that everyone was paying attention, so there was no point in trying to contain it. Izuku saw that Aizawa had even sat up to see what was going on. But for some reason he didn't stop it. It says right at the top of the page that I shouldn't tell anyone any of the messages or show anyone my paper. Why would you try to read it after seeing that? Izuku had to dodge as she got close to him again. And my score is personal information actually. I won't tell anyone. I just want to see how many messages you figured out. Iraraka floated herself to launch across the room after Izuku. Kakan told you on Friday. The only messages we didn't figure out any part of was yours and Yeyurazu's. Izuku had to activate 1% of 1 for all to roll out of the way to avoid her. He couldn't use any higher percentage without risking damage to the classroom. But Deku I want to see it. Unfortunately 1% is not fast enough to avoid Yuraraka's new moves. She got close enough and reached out to grab the paper, but right before her hand could close around it, she was wrapped in Aizawa's capture weapon and pulled away. Yuraraka, detention. I recall saying that part of being a hero is knowing what information should remain private. You had multiple warnings that his quiz contains private information yet you continued to attempt to see it anyway. That is enough for a full week of detention. You then decided that it was acceptable to use your quirk in my classroom which will award you another week. I expected better out of someone who has already been exposed to confidential information. Izuku sighed in relief and went back to his desk. Aizawa could give him a week or even a month of detention for using his quirk in class and he wouldn't care. While he wasn't able to keep his score private, he was able to keep his classmates' secrets safe, and that was enough to make it worth it. To his surprise, Aizawa just released Yuraraka and went back to his sleeping bag. Deku used his quirk too. Yuraraka blurted out before Aizawa managed to zip himself inside. He did what he could to protect his classmates' private information. Aizawa deadpan before zipping himself inside the sleeping bag. The class remained quiet for the rest of the class period. That whole thing had put all of them off talking about their scores. Izuku was grateful about it. He didn't want to hear anything about his score and he didn't want anyone else to question what messages were so private. He did, however, have no problem talking to Katsuki about it. After, of course, he put his quiz away so no one else could try and sneak a peek. I knew that people would question me about my score after Friday, but I didn't expect that. Izuku sighed loudly, not caring that others could hear. No one fucking expected that. She was fucking ruthless. I mean she spent all weekend questioning me whenever she could. But I thought that maybe hearing Aizawa say that some of this information should remain private would deter her. Deku, I'm pretty new to this whole friend thing, but she doesn't seem like a very good one. What? No, she's great, just really curious, that's all. Izuku felt like he was lying as he said that, but he really did consider Yuraka a close friend, if you fucking say so. After that they changed the subject to the hero fight that had been on TV that morning. That conversation continued through all their classes until lunch. Izuku went to follow his friends to lunch, when Shinsu suddenly grabbed him and pulled him away from the rest of the class. As soon as they were alone Shinsu started talking. I hope you don't mind, my dad told me what your message was. Izuku was about to start apologizing, but Shinsu spoke faster to cut him off. It's okay, I was thinking about telling you and Kaminari anyway. But you weren't going to tell Kakin, I'm so. I wasn't going to tell him, but you trust him, and I know he is one of Kaminari's friends. Shinsu sighed, he wasn't my first choice of people to tell, but honestly he doesn't seem to be the worst person to know. Actually, that's why I pulled you aside. I wanted to thank you, huh, for this morning. I don't mind Bakugu knowing, but I don't really want Yuraka to know. She's nice and all but she likes to talk, and I don't really want all the questions. Before this weekend Izuku would have defended her, but after the weekend he found himself agreeing. I have no idea what other information you might have been protecting, but thank you for keeping that information from getting out. When I came up with my message, I figured that only Mr. Aizawa and Kakin would ever know about it. I purposefully chose something that Mr. Aizawa already knew, just like I did last time. 
That information was never meant to reach anyone else, and it won't reach anyone else if I can help it. Izuku shrugged. Thank you, you're a good friend. Shinsu turned back to go the way they came. Now I don't know about you but I'm hungry. They walked back to the cafeteria together to join the rest of their friends. Izuku was a little worried about being near Yuraka, and when they walked up the rest of the group was lecturing her about what she had done that morning. Izuku and Shinsu turned around, not wanting to be near for that. Izuku followed Shinsu out of the cafeteria to a tree, where they sat down with Shaoji, Kuda, and Takoyami. Apparently this is where they sit if they want to get away from the noise inside. After they silently nodded at the two newcomers, the whole group sat there eating their lunch, enjoying the sunshine and each other's company in silence. It was the most relaxing lunch Izuku had in ages. Izuku thought that it was going to be another normal Tuesday. The assignment had been practically forgotten about. Yuraka had apologized, and everyone was still riding the high of the school festival that had happened a couple weeks prior. Izuku still felt a bit bad about the whole gentle criminal thing. But he couldn't let the man ruin the day for Iri. Luckily their performance went off without a hitch and Iri had a great time. The day went pretty normally until after lunch. Izuku tried to get Katsuki's attention during class, but he was unsuccessful. The last time that had happened had been while they were fighting, so Izuku was concerned. Their relationship had been going so well. Izuku had no idea why Katsuki would start ignoring him. Going into foundational heroics the day got even more abnormal. Instead of just All Might leading the class, Aizawa was also there. There were a lot of whispers as the class put on their gym clothes and met back up in a gym they hadn't been to before. Today's class will be slightly different than usual. It will be somewhat similar to the secretive communication assignment. Just like previous iterations you will be working with a partner. But instead of trying to get a message to your partner across a classroom, one of you will be directing the other. Aizawa spoke as he led them to a railing. Over the railing they could see a series of rooms. There was a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room, and a bedroom. It looked as though someone had taken the roof off of a one-story house and now they were looking down into it. Five people will be inside the house looking for cards. Aizawa held up a playing card. Their partners will be up here trying to figure out riddles so that they can direct the person in the house to where the cards are. There will be a total of 20 cards hidden but the goal is to find four and then enter the code to leave the house through the front door. The code will also need to be figured out by a brain teaser done by the person up here. You can use any tactics that you would like, but fighting is not allowed. You will not be given any way to communicate with your partner. That is something you must figure out. You will have a half an hour to choose a partner and to discuss a plan. At that point you will split from your partner and be sent to complete the exercise or to sit in a waiting room. Aizawa led them back outside the gym. Your prep time starts now. As soon as Aizawa finished directing them Izuku turned to Katsuki and asked him silently to be partners. But it seemed like the other boy was still ignoring him. Izuku was almost going to go to someone else, but he figured that he had the best chance of doing well with Katsuki, so he might as well try asking him out loud before giving up. Hey Kaken, do you want to be partners? Katsuki just looked at him blankly for a moment. Fucking Katsuki sighed, fine. The rest of their class split into partners quickly, most people preferring to work with people they had worked with before. As soon as people paired up, they went off on their own, making sure that they were out of earshot of anyone else. Izuku followed Katsuki to the side of the building. Leaning on the wall, Izuku started to plan. Okay Kaken, how should we go about this? Do you want to be up here working on the riddles or down there finding the cards? I mean, I think I would do okay finding the cards, but I love riddles. I'll be down there finding the cards, you solve the riddles. We already can communicate just fine so there is no reason to strategize more than that. Okay but, Deku, shut up Katsuki pointedly turned away from Izuku. After a moment he moved to a completely different part of the wall, far away from Izuku. Izuku was hurt. He thought that Katsuki would never turn his back on him. After everything they had been through he thought they were solid. But this was really making him question that. The half an hour passed slowly. Izuku spent the whole time kicking at the dirt, stressing about what had happened with Katsuki. He was also worried about how this exercise would go. Normally they had no issues with communication, but Katsuki was ignoring him. As they stood apart from each other Izuku took the time to really look at Katsuki. He was expecting to see anger, or annoyance, something that would explain his actions but also reassure him that they could still do the exercise well. But Katsuki was just staring at the ground, not looking as though he was actually seeing it. Izuku had seen Katsuki like this only a couple times, once in middle school, after the sludge villain attack, and again after Kimino. Both times Izuku later learned that Katsuki had a lot on his mind. After the sludge villain Katsuki had realized that he wasn't strong enough alone and he struggled with that. After Kamino he was struggling with guilt about All Might and having been kidnapped. This time there was no obvious stressor for this sudden shift, so Izuku was clueless about what was going on and how to help. There was nothing he could do except wait for Katsuki to tell him about what was going on. 
But Izuku worried that Katsuki would be preoccupied during this exercise. Katsuki could work past annoyance or anger to get through an exercise. It might not be pleasant like during the final exam, but he could. Izuku had seen that multiple times. But the only time that he had seen Katsuki attempt something while he was this distracted was the provisional licensing exam. He couldn't say for certain that being distracted was the reason Katsuki failed. But it probably didn't help. After the half hour ended the class was called back to start the first round of the exercise. Aizawa called out which pairs would go first. Izuku and Katsuki were called to go in the second group, along with Ida and Todoroki, Mina and Su, Shouji and Kuda, and Sadu and Takoyami. Once they figured out who was going first, they were split up and taken to different rooms. Izuku found himself sitting in a room with Ida, Su, Kuda, and Takoyami. Their partners were taken to a different room so they couldn't strategize anymore. It didn't matter to Izuku anyway. It's not like they strategized much to begin with. The room they were taken to was pretty basic. It was a mostly empty white room. The only things in it were a few beige couches and a clock. The students lounged and waited, remaining silent except for an occasional whisper. Izuku didn't pay much attention to his classmates. He instead found himself staring at the ceiling, thinking about what could have possibly caused Katsuki to be so lost in thought. But he was coming up blank. Izuku had thought that this would have been a short exercise. They just had to find enough flags to get out of the room, but apparently it was more difficult than that because they were still waiting after an hour. Having long gotten bored of the ceiling Izuku had taken to passing time by counting the seconds as the clock ticked on. He wasn't the only one. Over half the people in the room were doing the same thing. As the clock reached exactly an hour and 15 minutes after the first round started, the door opened. All Might led the group out to the railing that overlooked the house. All Might started handing out clipboards with some papers clipped to it and pencils as they watched their partners get led into the house below. Each of you is getting a list of riddles, some scratch paper and a pencil. Feel free to write whatever you would like on the scratch paper, but please do not write on the paper with the riddles. Everyone is getting the same set of riddles however. Each of you is getting a different brain teaser to figure out the code for the door. The code is the same for all of them though. Once he finished handing out the supplies All Might faced all of them. Remember, you don't need to figure out every riddle, you just need to figure out enough for your partner to find four cards. Also remember, they don't have to only listen to their partner, they can listen to anyone that is giving hints. They could also just look for cards on their own without getting any hints. Once Aizawa gave the all clear from inside the house All Might instructed them to turn over the papers on the clipboard and begin. Izuku looked over the list of riddles, searching for one that he could figure out quickly. He chuckled a bit to himself as he read the first one. What gets wet while drying? Izuku hadn't been lying when he told Katsuki that he liked riddles. Over the years he had looked up a lot, including this one. Turning his attention to the rooms, Izuku looked for the object that was the answer to the riddle. Grinning once he found what he was looking for in the bathroom, Izuku tried to get Katsuki's attention. He clicked like they always do, but Katsuki didn't seem to have noticed. Izuku clicked a few more times before asking Katsuki, Kaken, can you hear me? They had communicated from much further away before, so he knew that the other boy should be able to hear him, but it seemed like before, Katsuki was too stuck in his head. He didn't answer. Unwilling to give up, Izuku shouted, Kaken. It worked. Katsuki turned to stare at him, but so did everyone else in the room. Izuku shrugged sheepishly at his classmates before starting to communicate with his partner. Check the towels hanging up in the bathroom. Katsuki made his way to the bathroom while grumbling. Was the fucking yelling necessary? Well if you were paying attention then I wouldn't have had to. Izuku's a very forgiving person, but he was getting pretty annoyed at his partner. It was one thing to be distracted enough that Izuku had to yell, but to then get mad at him for yelling, that was a completely different story. Izuku turned back to the riddles angrily as Katsuki pulled a card off the wall from behind the towels. Unfortunately he didn't remember the answers to any of the others so he actually had to think more about them. After a minute or so he realized the answer to another one. What can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? He didn't see the object in question anywhere though. He clicked to get Katsuki's attention and was glad to see that this time it actually worked. Kaken, have you seen any stamps or letters or anything like that? Why the fuck would I know? That's your damn job. Kaken, I can't see everything from up here. And technically my job is to figure out the riddle, which I did. Fucking fine. Katsuki stomped over to the front door. Izuku couldn't see what Katsuki was doing from the angle he was at, but he angrily held a card up as he walked away from the door. Izuku was distracted by a commotion at a different part of the house. Mina and Sato were racing to get to a clock in the living room, only for Todoroki to freeze it in a block of ice before either of them got to it. Mina and Sato stopped dead in their tracks as Todoroki calmly walked over to the frozen clock in front of them. He calmly grabbed it with his left hand and melted the ice. As soon as he was able, he pulled a card from inside of it. As far as Izuku could tell Katsuki and he were in the lead with two cards, followed by Todoroki and Ida with one. 
unless they were really sneaky about it. No one else had found any yet. Izuku turned his attention back to the list in front of him as the commotion below died down. It got quiet as everyone regained their focus. The students that were tasked with figuring out riddles were staring at their paper, occasionally making notes. The students that were inside the house were searching on their own. Most of them were looking under things and behind things, hoping to stumble on a card by chance. Izuku looked over the railing into the rooms on occasion, looking for objects that might be the answer. Occasionally Katsuki would be searching like everyone else down there, but usually he was just staring into space. Izuku was getting frustrated that he was expected to do all the work, but there wasn't anything that he could do about it. By the time that Izuku figured out another riddle every pair had at least one card. Quite a few were found by chance, not from solving a riddle. A couple however did start a lot of commotion as other groups overheard someone telling their partner where to look. Ida and Todoroki were struggling after they realized that just about everyone could understand their version of Morse code. Mina and Tsu were having the same issue. Kuda originally was just whispering to Shouji, but once it was realized, Izuku and a couple other people moved closer to Kuda so they could overhear, forcing them to rethink their strategy. Takoyami and Sadu's approach wasn't subtle in the slightest. But it was effective. Dark Shadow just led Sadu to wherever the card was hidden, as Izuku watched Todoroki find another card, putting them in the lead with three. He got Katsuki's attention, check behind the painting of the river in the hallway. Izuku wasn't completely sure that was where a card would be, but he was pretty sure about the answer to, what runs, but never walks, murmurs, but never talks, has a bed, but never sleeps, and has a mouth, but never eats. The painting was the only thing that made any sense. Sure enough, Katsuki pulled a card out from behind the painting. Katsuki's only comment was an angry, fucking finally. Izuku was feeling a little better now that they were tied for the lead, but he was still really frustrated, and that made it really hard to concentrate. He read the rest of the clues over and over again, but he hadn't a clue what the answers were. He recognized that he wasn't ever going to figure out a riddle if he looked at them all at once, so he instead chose one to focus on. What starts with a T, ends with a T, and has T in it. As Izuku read the riddle over and over again his frustration kept building. T. T. Izuku sighed, I could really use a cup of tea right now. Izuku's head shot up. That's it. He looked around the rooms until he spotted the teapot on the counter in the kitchen. Kaken, in the teapot. Katsuki made his way to the teapot and looked inside, and then under it. There is fucking nothing here Deku. Oh, I found that one already. Mina spoke up from across the room as she held up a card so that Izuku and Katsuki could see it. Izuku groaned as Katsuki grumbled and wandered away, probably to stare at another wall. Izuku knew that there was a chance he would waste his time solving a riddle someone had already found the card for but it really didn't help his frustration. He could feel his eyes starting to tear up but he held it back. This was not the time nor place for crying. No matter how frustrated and angry he was, he kept looking at the riddles and saw another that he might be able to solve. What is words, but never speaks? He recognized it from when he had searched for riddles before, but he couldn't quite remember the answer. He searched the rooms for anything that could spark his memory. When his eyes landed on the bookshelf in the bedroom, he couldn't help but grin. Kakin, look at the books on the bookshelf. As Katsuki made his way into the bedroom Izuku's stomach dropped, he watched as Todoroki found his final card behind a calendar. He quickly turned the page on his clipboard to look at the brain teaser to figure out the code. Before he could read it though, he heard a click from Katsuki. Deku, there is nothing here. Izuku looked up to see Katsuki throwing books around. He flipped back to the riddles quickly and began to read them. But not before telling Katsuki, just start looking under everything in the bookshelf. I haven't seen anyone check there and there isn't much time. The next few moments seemed to take forever, but it was probably just a moment. Izuku read through the list before stopping on one. What has a head and a tail but no body? The answer was on the tip of his tongue. Right before the answer could come to him, he looked up to see Katsuki finding a card under a jar full of coins. Izuku flipped the page back to the brain teaser for the code and began to read. The first and last digits are the same. The sum of the last two digits is 8. The sum of the middle two digits is 9. The first three digits are in ascending order. The sum of all the digits is 15. At first looking at it he was overwhelmed. He had no idea where to start and he was still struggling to concentrate because of his frustration with Katsuki. Izuku looked around for Ada, only to find him writing furiously. Realizing he was running out of time, Izuku turned back to his brain teaser. As he worked through it, he struggled to keep himself from mumbling. It was a habit that he had worked to break for years but he still thought the best out loud. Luckily he had somewhat trained himself to transfer his mumbling to writing, so he took out a piece of scratch paper and went to work. The only thing anyone heard for a while was pencils scratching against paper. Ida and Izuku were working to figure out the code, while the rest of their classmates were trying to figure out the riddles and find cards. Both Todoroki and Katsuki were standing by the door waiting for their partner to tell them the code. Todoroki was looking at it. 
ready to find out the code as soon as Ida figured it out. Katsuki was staring at the ground, deep in thought again. Izuku narrowed the answer down to nine different codes, then to four, then finally to one. Without wasting a second he started clicking to get Katsuki's attention. But Katsuki didn't notice. Kaken Izuku spoke aloud not wanting to bring too much attention to the fact that he had figured it out. But Katsuki still didn't budge. Kaken, Izuku spoke louder, but the other boy still wasn't listening. Izuku heard tapping from nearby and Todoroki made his way to the keypad. Kaken, Izuku yelled as loud as he could, making everyone in the room jump. Katsuki swung around to glare at him, but it was too late. Todoroki had already made it out the door. Katsuki's head swung around to look at Todoroki before turning back to Izuku furiously. What the fuck Deku? Are you so damn useless that you couldn't figure out the damn code before them? Why the fuck did I pair up with a useless fucking Deku? In middle school an outburst like that would have been completely normal and Izuku would have just brushed it off. Recently an outburst like that would have really upset Izuku. But after having just struggled on this assignment, the outburst just turned Izuku's frustration into anger. How dare you blame me? I was trying to get your attention before Ida figured out the code, but you were too busy staring off into space. You didn't do anything the whole time. In this exercise, you were the useless one. Izuku glared down at Katsuki who rather than yell back, which would have been totally expected, just stomped away, not caring that class hadn't ended yet. While they were yelling their classmates that had been in the first round had been led back into the room, so their entire class was staring at Katsuki as he left, and then at Izuku. Still beyond angry, Izuku ignored them. He turned his attention to All Might and Aizawa. All Might coughed a couple times, bringing the attention to him before he started talking. Well done today everyone. We will be going over the exercise in class tomorrow so take some time to think over where you could have improved before then. Other than that class is dismissed. Have a good afternoon. Izuku barely let All Might finish talking before he left the room. He knew that his friends would want to make sure that he was okay after an argument like that. But he hadn't calmed down enough to deal with people yet and he really didn't expect to for the rest of the day. In all the years that he had known Katsuki, he had never been this angry at him. Aizawa wasn't sure what to make of the first round of the exercise. The students took a lot longer than he expected to finish, but other than that they did well. Every pair had at least two cards, which was better than any past year. There were some interceptions, but not nearly as many as expected. The winners weren't at all surprising. Yeyarazu and Jiru won, but they didn't win by a landslide like he was expecting. The other pairs made sure to give them a run for their money. Going into the first round he had a lot of expectations but he had even more for the second round. Ada and Todoroki would have had a good chance of doing well, but against Bakugu and Midoriya's flawless communication, they didn't have a chance. Ada and Midoriya were probably evenly matched trying to figure out the riddles, but Midoriya had the advantage of getting Bakugu's input on everything. Ada could try and get Todoroki's input, but they would have had to change their form of communication or have other people able to listen in. Midoriya didn't have to worry about that. The rest of the pairs that they were competing with also could potentially do well. But Aizawa figured that their success would be more due to luck. At first it seemed like he might be right. Within a minute of being given the list of riddles Midoriya was already grinning and searching the rooms. Aizawa watched carefully to see how they were communicating. And he heard for the first time, a click from Midoriya. He hid his grin in his capture weapon, excited that he was finally getting some insight into their communication. But almost immediately his grin fell. Midoriya had to yell to get Bakugu's attention. Aizawa didn't catch any more communication before Bakugu made his way to the bathroom and pulled out a card. Midoriya turned back to the riddles scowling. Aizawa was completely confused by what he was seeing. This was more similar to what he was expecting before the first assignment. It seemed like they were barely working together. As the exercise went on Aizawa remained confused. Midoriya hadn't yelled again but his jaw was tense and he was glaring at the paper. Meanwhile Bakugu didn't seem to be doing anything most of the time. Occasionally Bakugu would look around for a card, but he spent most of his time staring into space. It could be that Aizawa's original theory about their strategy was correct, and Bakugu was just focused on answering the riddles, but Midoriya's expression made him think that that wasn't the case. It was also strange that Bakugu seemed angry every time he was directed somewhere. He held up his card very aggressively when he found it in the basket of mail by the door and he stomped to the hallway when he got the card from behind the river painting. Aizawa tried to split his attention evenly amongst all the students, but his attention kept being drawn to the problem duo. Even when there was commotion among the other students, like when they intercepted another pair's messages, as soon as the drama was over Aizawa found himself watching the duo. They weren't doing anything interesting. Midoriya was hunched over the riddles and occasionally looking around, and Bakugu was mostly just staring. But Aizawa was trained to notice when things were different, and something was going on between the two. Right in the last minute of the exam things really went wrong for the pair. Midoriya resorted to yelling again, and then things got really bad. 
Bakugo was obviously completely zoned out, and once he realized that he had lost, he let loose on Midoriya. As soon as Aizawa realized that the exercise was over he brought the other students back into the room. The first thing they heard when they got back was Katsuki yelling. Aizawa was immediately reminded of the note he had made to himself, the task he had repeatedly held off. It couldn't wait any longer. He needed to figure out more about the problem duo's past and specifically, Bakugu's behavior. He was a little placated by the fact that for what seemed like the first time ever Midoriya yelled back, but that wasn't enough. It was unacceptable to call another student useless, and Bakugu had been getting away with doing that for far too long. All Might ended the class while Aizawa was deep in thought. He figured that if either boy wanted to talk about what had just happened, they would talk to All Might. He didn't know why but they were both especially close to the other teacher, especially Midori. With that in mind Aizawa rushed to Nedzu's office. There were a lot of different ways he could start his investigation, but no matter what he did, everything went better when he brought his boss into the loop from the start. Ah, uh, Aizawa, what can I do for you today? Nedzu started after he opened the door for Aizawa, right before the man knocked. I want to look into Midoriya and Bakugu's past, specifically at Bakugu's behavior. Aizawa went straight to the point. Though, is there any reason that this is coming up now? Nenzu asked as he started typing at his computer. I have been meaning to for a while. But Bakugu was acting strange in class today, and both boys ended the class yelling. Huh, today they did another communication exercise, correct? Nenzu didn't look away from his computer. Yes, and they paired up again but they didn't do nearly as well as I would have expected. They were beaten by Ada and Todoroki. Hmm, how unusual. Nedzu pressed a final key on his keyboard before turning back to Aizawa. I emailed you footage from the security cameras at their middle school. It is all random footage from random days. A random sample to save you some time, but I can pull specific days if you would like. I haven't watched it so I have absolutely no idea what you will find, but let me know if you need any more. Nedzu's gaze darkened, and please let me know what you find. Of course, you will know as soon as I find anything. Aizawa nodded in thanks as Nedzu pressed a button to open the door behind him. Have a nice afternoon. Nedzu yelled at Aizawa's retreating back. Izuku avoided people for the rest of the day. He had calmed down not long after class had ended but he was beyond tired. Being angry for as long as he was is exhausting. He also hadn't forgotten his friend's reactions after the last assignment and he knew that they would bother him with questions about what happened. Normally he would go to Shinsu to get away from questions, but Shinsu was planning on spending the afternoon with Iri so Izuku was left alone. The next morning Izuku put off leaving his room for as long as possible. He didn't even go down for breakfast. He walked into class right before class started and sat down in his seat. For a moment he looked at the back of Katsuki's head, but he turned away quickly. It wasn't that he was angry anymore, but he was still hurt. Aizawa walked into the room and immediately Izuku, as well as the rest of the class, stiffened. They had only seen Aizawa really angry a few times, including right now. Their teacher didn't seem to notice the stairs. He only seemed to see one student. Aizawa marched over the Katsuki. Let's go. He almost growled. Izuku watched the whole thing confused. He thought perhaps Katsuki had done something to get himself in trouble and that was why he was so out of it yesterday. But from the look on Katsuki's face it didn't seem like he knew what was going on either. A few minutes after Aizawa and Katsuki left the room, present Mike walked in. Immediately he was bombarded with questions. What's going on? Did Bakugu do something? Are they going to be back before the end of class? All right. All right present Mike put his hands out trying to calm the class. I can't answer most of your questions, but I can say that Aizawa will probably be back by the end of class. What about Bakugu? Kirishima asked with a shaky voice. Present Mike sighed. Something from Bakugu's past came up. Present Mike glanced at Izuku. When Present Mike made eye contact with him, Izuku's stomach dropped. He vaguely heard his classmates whisper about what Present Mike could be talked about. But Izuku was too caught up in his own head. He remembered the day they decided to start this ruse like it was yesterday. This plan was the only thing they really fought about until Izuku got a quirk. Katsuki was against it the whole time, but Izuku insisted, and Izuku kept insisting that they keep it up every time they talked about it. Every time that other students began to step in because they thought Katsuki wasn't being mean enough Izuku would tell him to escalate, and every time Katsuki would argue about it, he would always eventually give in. Normally after Izuku explained how he would rather be bullied by someone he knew didn't mean it instead of someone who did, even if Katsuki was saying the meaner things. It had come up a few times that Katsuki could get in trouble for it, but they both figured that was unlikely. Katsuki's reservations were always about him not wanting to be mean to Izuku, not fear of getting caught. The adults at school never stopped Katsuki, if anything they encouraged it. Of course they knew that Yue would never encourage bullying, but it was obvious to them that the adults at Aldera would never tell anyone and risk Katsuki's future. He was their ticket to fame. 
Izuku felt like he had just been dunked in ice water. Somehow Yue found out about what happened, and Katsuki's future would be ruined because of it. As soon as his brain caught up with what was happening Izuku found himself standing. And while his entire class was staring at him, he ran out of the room. He figured that there were two places they could be. Closest to him was the teacher's lounge. Izuku barely noticed the shocked faces of the people he sprinted by as he made his way through the halls. He burst through the door of the teacher's lounge, only to be disappointed to find it empty. There was one other place to check, the worst of the two, Nenzu's office, and he hoped that Izuku had that only Aizawa was involved went out the window. If Nenzu was involved, it was serious. Izuku left the teacher's lounge in a sprint. He could feel the stares from the students inside the classrooms with their doors wide open that he was passing, but he didn't care. Katsuki's future at UA was in danger because of something that he pushed him to do. Finally Izuku reached the office and went to push open the door, but to his surprise the door opened right as he reached for it. He tumbled into the room and face planted on the floor drawing the attention of everyone inside. Nezu, Aizawa, Katsuki, and both of Katsuki's parents were staring at Izuku as he picked himself up off the floor. The video footage of Katsuki telling Izuku to take a swan dive played on a screen on Nezu's desk. You can't expel Kaken. Aizawa and Nenzu both looked at Izuku in shock, while Katsuki's parents looked on with confusion and residual anger. Katsuki just stared at the floor. Midoriya, I understand that you think of Bakugu as your friend, but how he treated you in middle school is unacceptable. We can't allow someone who is so cruel to be a hero. Aizawa said gently. No, you don't understand. Midoriya, Nenzu started but Izuku didn't let him continue. I told Kaken to treat me like that. All the adults in the room stared at Izuku, but Katsuki's eyes remained on the floor. It remained silent for a long moment before Izuku sighed. I'm a late bloomer. If you watch the videos then you know I didn't have a quirk. All of our classmates, they turned on me immediately. And the teachers were fine with it, they even joined in. But Kaken didn't, he defended me. And he would have kept defending me if we hadn't found a more effective way. A more effective way to do what? He was the ringleader in those videos. Aizawa ran his hand over his face. A more effective way to get people to leave me alone. When Kaken was defending me everyone was against us. But he got mad one day. And everyone else started to leave me alone. We figured out that as long as he was the ringleader, everyone else backed off. They still weren't nice to me. But they didn't dare do anything once Kaken staked his claim. Izuku laughed sadly. I was his personal punching bag that no one else was allowed to touch. Bakugu, is this all true? Why wouldn't you tell us about this before? Aizawa turned to Katsuki who was still staring at the ground. It's true, but I still shouldn't have done it. Katsuki's voice cracked. He was my best friend. He is my best friend. And I was a fucking asshole to him every day. Kaken, I asked you to be an asshole to me. I convinced you to say what you said to me. And Kaken, every time you said something you told me that you didn't mean it at the same time. It seemed like you were being mean, but you weren't. Izuku moved closer to Katsuki, hoping the boy would look up, but his gaze stayed on the ground. Okay, okay but what about since you've been at UA? As far as I know there were no issues with bullying so why continue to act like that? Aizawa asked Katsuki but he just shrugged. Aizawa turned to Izuku instead, still expecting an answer. Izuku sighed. Until we got to UA, school was terrible for the both of us, all because I didn't have a quirk. Suddenly we got to UA and I wasn't quirkless anymore. I don't know his exact thought process, but I don't blame him for being angry, especially because I didn't have much of an explanation for him. He shrugged. Aizawa ran his hand down his face and opened his mouth to say something. But Katsuki's mom beat him to it. I hate to cut this short but is Katsuki still being expelled? From what it sounds like, the brat had a plan the whole time. If he is not being expelled, I need to get to work. Aizawa looked over at Nedzu questioningly. No, it would be foolish to expel him with all this new information. I'm sorry for wasting your time. Nonsense, I'm glad you called us here. I worried for years that this idiot had fucked up all his friendships. It's good to know that he didn't and is still close to Izuku all these years later. Katsuki's parents got up and left but Katsuki and Izuku stayed. It was obvious the conversation wasn't over. While the conversation was paused Izuku used that opportunity to question Katsuki silently. He didn't expect a response so he was pleasantly surprised when Katsuki seemed to notice his click. So relieved in fact, that he didn't notice Aizawa also react to the click. Kaken are you okay? Deku, I bullied you for years. I knew better but I did it anyway. Kaken I asked you to. You never said or did anything that I didn't ask you to. Katsuki swung around to face Izuku, his eyes leaving the floor for the first time since Izuku entered the room. Izuku, I told you to kill yourself. Did you mean it? Izuku spoke while staring Katsuki in the eye. He knew that it was stupid to speak out loud, but this felt too important to say silently. No, Katsuki shook his head. Of course I didn't mean it. I never meant any of it. You know that. Then what's the issue? Izuku switched back to asking silently. The issue is I said it. I was terrible to you. 
Katsuki yelled before switching to responding silently. I always thought it was obvious that I didn't mean it. I would laugh at how dumb those extras were for believing me. But those videos, I was so convincing, your reactions were so real. I don't know what to think about it all anymore. Kakan I never once thought that you meant what you said. I acted like I did. But Kakan, Izuku looked his friend straight in the eye. I knew from the beginning to believe what you said silently, not what you said out loud. The two boys stared at each other before Nedzu cleared his throat, abruptly reminding them that they weren't alone. They turned to look at their teacher and principal, eyes wide like a deer caught in the headlights. Um um dot 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 u dot 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 Izuku started but he had no idea what to say. Nedzu chuckled. That is quite incredible to see in person. Did your ability to communicate like that stem from your ruse? Yeah we couldn't talk at school without people knowing that I didn't hate the nerd. So we found another way to communicate. Katsuki grumbled. So how does it work then? We heard the click at the beginning but after that we only could tell what you said out loud. Aizawa leaned forward, ready to finally figure out the mystery. Oh, the click is just to get each other's attention. It doesn't really mean anything. It's more our body language. Well, kinda. It's hard to explain. Izuku looked around trying to figure out how to explain. It's little movements, shit we incorporated into our everyday actions. That's why we have to click first. Katsuki supplied. Yeah, if we don't we would either try to decode normal movements and be constantly getting nonsense, or we would never notice that we are trying to talk to each other. Hum, what kind of movements do you mean? Nenzu was leaning forward, very interested in what was being said, like twitching an ear or Kakan's explosions. You know stuff that's second nature. Izuku shrugged. Aizawa and Nedzu looked at each other for a long moment before turning back to Katsuki and Izuku. Izuku couldn't quite read the expressions on their faces, but they seemed almost confused. He wasn't sure, but he wouldn't be surprised if they were confused. The two of them had never tried to explain their communication to anyone before, so they had never bothered to put how they were communicating into words. It was a lot harder than he would have expected it to be. Their communication was a lot more than their little movements like they described it. They couldn't tell someone that moving their ear meant one thing while twitching their hand meant another, because that wouldn't be true. Sometimes they meant different things, but other times they meant the same thing, and their meaning changed all the time. They couldn't even explain it as the movements surrounding it could change the meaning, because that wasn't true either. They had perfected their language to the point that they could do a series of motions and the other would understand what they were saying but then do the same set of motions later for a different message and the other would still understand. It was impossible to describe. How interesting. Nedzu clapped after finally breaking the silence. Now before I can send you back to class I have a few concerns that I would like to discuss. First off, I would like to talk about what we saw here just a bit ago. Nedzu motioned to the screen that had long finished playing the video of the suicide baiting and was now just playing a screensaver. I'm sure you both remember the events of that day, even if we were distracted from the video earlier. Now, from your conversation earlier Bakugu, it sounded as though you were saying that you didn't mean it. Is that correct? Nenzu looked at Katsuki. Yeah, I never meant any of the shit I said. Katsuki grumbled looking back at the ground. And Midoriya you understood this when he said it. Nenzu turned his attention to Izuku. Yeah, I mean, I had to convince him to say it. He didn't want to, so I practically made him a script. You made a script for him to tell you to kill yourself. Aizawa rubbed at his temple, beyond done with this whole thing. Yeah, Izuku looked away sheepishly. If he didn't escalate someone else would. With him saying it then at least I knew he didn't mean it so it wouldn't hurt as bad. But it still hurt. Katsuki looked at Izuku. Izuku looked at Katsuki and then at the two other people in the room. A little, but really, this probably sounds really bad. But it also made me kinda happy. Izuku shrugged at the incredulous stares he was getting before turning to face Katsuki. It was kinda nice knowing that you didn't want to be that mean to me. But you did it anyway because you knew it would end up better for me. Izuku mumbled at the ground. It was nice that you did that for me. There was silence for a moment before Nedzu spoke up again. Okay so now that we have clarified that everyone is on the same page about this we need to talk about what will happen if this video gets out. Katsuki's and Izuku's head shot up to look at Nedzu. Knowing the context is the only reason we are allowing you to continue here. Nedzu looked at Katsuki. But the media has been known to ignore context. No one here would release this video, and I can delete it from their servers. But if anyone at Aldera has backups and releases them there could be major consequences. They won't. Katsuki and Izuku both said at the same time. Huh, I was their fucking golden goose or whatever. Their claim to fame. They were always going on about how once I was a pro they would be famous for turning out such a great hero. They would never jeopardize that. Katsuki explained. Yeah, they wouldn't risk losing favor with the public by having that video come out. I'm not sure how far back in the video you watched. But our teacher purposefully brought up that I wanted to go to UA so that they would all tear me down. Besides, all the teachers knew about everything, but they never did anything about it. Releasing that video would hurt their reputation just as much as Katsuki's. Izuku supplied. 
Dezu scrutinized them for a moment. Okay then, that is all I wanted to discuss with you. Aizawa, was there anything else you wanted to bring up? What happened yesterday? You said that the beginning of the year was because of a lack of communication which I'm assuming you fixed. So what was all the yelling after yesterday's exercise? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Kaken was really distracted and we both got kinda frustrated. I. Katsuki looked over at Izuku for a long moment before looking away. Katsuki whispered under his breath. Fuck he looked at the floor and spoke a barely loud enough to hear. I had a lot on my mind. The silence stretched on for a long time. The adults were waiting for an explanation that neither boy would give. Finally, after what seemed like an hour but was probably closer to a few minutes Nenzu looked at the clock. Oh, look at the time, you both need to get back to class. The principal rushed the two boys out of the room. When the door closed behind them, they looked at each other before looking away to walk silently back to their classroom. Neither said anything the whole way there. When they walked into the room there was an explosion of noise. Just about everyone was asking questions. What happened? Where were they? What present Mike had meant about something from Bakugou's past coming up? Katsuki and Izuku ignored the questions for the most part. Izuku only answered. There was a misunderstanding, everything is fine. It took a moment for the excitement to die down, but once it did, the day continued as normal. Aizawa didn't leave when the boys did. While he was glad that there wasn't any actual bullying happening between the two, something seemed off and he could tell that Nedzu thought so too. Well that was enlightening, Nedzu said as soon as the door closed. Was it though? I learned a lot about their relationship but I have more questions than before about how they communicate. Yes, they didn't seem to tell the whole truth about how they communicate or about what happened yesterday. But we did learn a lot about their middle school. Nedzu grinned mischievously. Oh how I love serving justice. Aizawa was a little put off by Nedzu's grin, but he found himself agreeing. He hated that two of his top students had gone to such a terrible school. Destroying it could be fun. The questions never stopped. Izuku hoped that people would move on like they did from the assignment, but they weren't that lucky. Some people were more pushy than others, but everyone wanted to know what had happened after Bakugu left class and why Izuku ran out to join him. It would have been manageable if Izuku still had friends he could trust that he could spend time with, but Katsuki had been ignoring him since they left Nedzu's office, and Shinsu was spending most of his time with his family or Kaminari. After a week Izuku was struggling. Occasionally he would spend some time with Ida or Todoroki, but Todoroki was busy with his supplemental lessons and Ida spent most of his time studying. Sue wasn't bad to spend time with but she was always around Yuraraka, and Izuku was avoiding her. Yuraraka was being just as aggressive with her questions as she had been after the results came out for the second iteration, and Izuku was done with it. She was constantly asking what was going on between him and Katsuki and what happened after he ran out of class. No matter how many times Izuku asked her to stop, she never did. The whole situation was honestly kinda making him mad. He wanted to spend time with his friends like he always had, but he also didn't want to be pestered about what happened. He could just tell them, but he and Katsuki had agreed to not tell anyone. He broke their agreement by telling Nenzu and Aizawa, but he wasn't going to let Katsuki get expelled. Telling his friends was out of the question so instead the anger just built up. It didn't help that a few days after Katsuki stopped talking to him he had a weird dream about the first holder of one for all and it had activated his quirk in his sleep. The first person he would want to talk to about that besides All Might would have been Katsuki, but with Katsuki not talking to him, he couldn't mention it. After everything they went through, and how they always promised to be heroes together, Izuku was forced to struggle alone. Katsuki's absence just added to his already building anger. It all came to head during Foundational Heroics, the class that was turning out to be the most drama-inducing class. Today, they were doing a joint training exercise with Class B Vlad King, Aizawa, and All Might were there to supervise. Their class was split into five teams of four and so was the other class. A group from Class A would then go against a group from Class B, both teams trying to capture the entire other team. They have 20 minutes or until an entire team is captured. If neither team is captured in its entirety by the time 20 minutes runs out the win goes to the team that captured the most people. It was encouraged but not required to use their communications skills that they had been working on in past assignments. The exercise sounded like it would be fun, except the teams were determined by lots, and Izuku wasn't known for his luck. His team consisted of him, Katsuki, Yuraka, and Shinsu. If the last week hadn't happened this group would be incredible, but as it was he was doomed. Shinsu and him still got along without issue, but Yuraka and Katsuki both on the same team with him was a recipe for disaster. It didn't help that the team that they were paired against from Class B included Monoma. The most obnoxious person in Class B the rest of the team was composed of Yanagi, Kodai, and Shota. Honestly Izuku didn't know as much about their quirks as he would have liked. He had seen all of them before, during the sports festival, and after when he rewatched the whole thing. 
The training camp had also allowed him to see their quirks a bit before it was interrupted, but he hadn't had the chance to really see how their quirks worked in detail. And with the tension between the classes he probably never would. As soon as the teams were announced Yuraka ran over to him, clearly excited. We are on a team together. It always works better to be on a team with your friends right. Too bad Bakugu is on the team too though. But I guess that we have to learn to work with people we don't get along with. Shinsu calmly walked behind her, raising his eyebrows at her mention of Katsuki. Shinsu technically had just as much information as the rest of the class about the problem duo's friendship. But he was more observant than most. And from their conversation after the second assignment's results came out it was obvious that he knew at least that there was mutual trust in their relationship. Yeah it's great to work with friends. Izuku responded only half paying attention. He was too busy looking for Katsuki. As soon as he caught sight of the other boy, he clicked, and to his surprise it seemed to have caught Katsuki's attention. Hey, we are all over here so we can talk strategy. TCH, we are the last group to go, we can fucking figure that out later. As if to emphasize his point the teachers called the first group to go. Everyone's attention was captured by the competing teams. Both classes watched as team after team competed, in between matches. And when there wasn't much action Yuraka kept alternating between asking about the situation with Katsuki and what their plan should be for their turn. It was annoying to say the least. When it finally came to their turn Izuku was glad. Each class was tied with two wins. This match would determine the winner. Izuku felt the pressure a little but he was thinking about other things. Hopefully Yuraka would focus on the match instead of him so he could finally have some peace. As they walked into the city center where the match would take place they all grouped up. Alright so we, Izuku started to plan. We capture them. What other fucking plan do we need? Katsuki interrupted, looking annoyed. He looked at Yuraka and Shinsu with disdain before stomping off. Kakin, Izuku yelled at the retreating boy, causing him to turn around for a moment. Izuku pleaded silently. Work with us, I don't know what has been going on recently but our best chance is by working together. Come on Midoriya, why are you trying to work with him anyway? What happened last week? Hiroraka grabbed his arm and tried to pull him away. Izuku angrily shook her off without taking his eyes off Katsuki. Work with your friends, they are better for you anyway. Katsuki turned and walked away, just like he had been all week. That was the last straw. Yuraka's persistent questions and Katsuki's disregard for their lifelong friendship pushed him over the edge. Izuku's vision went black as his anger exploded out of him. Katsuki felt bad about how he was acting, but he couldn't stop himself. Kirishima's voice kept ringing in his head. Just ask him out already before Yuraka does. It was jarring to hear then. At the end of lunch the day of the riddle exercise, but now it was painful. At first he denied that he even liked Izuku. They were just friends, best friends, but just friends. But the more he thought about it the more he realized that that might not be the case. He always felt safest with Izuku. In Kamino he felt more safe when Izuku showed up than when All Might did, even though Kirishima was the one to offer his hand. Unlike the majority of people, Izuku was someone he actually really liked spending time with. After that first assignment they had spent so much time together, and Katsuki had never been so happy. He struggled loosening up and joking around with people, but with Izuku he found himself rolling around in the grass, repeatedly. It was no secret that he thought of Izuku as his friend for years. He only had the one so the best friend title was unnecessary. He was his best friend by default. When he made friends with his idiots he knew that he didn't feel the same for them as he felt about Izuku. Izuku explained this as them being friends and Izuku being his best friend. But the more he thought about it, the more he questioned where would that leave Kirishima. His friendship with Kirishima was different than his friendship with the rest of the group. He liked hanging out with all of them and talking to them. But he felt like he could talk to Kirishima about more. There was a reason that Izuku had Kirishima hold his hand out. Katsuki was so distracted by thinking about how he felt towards Izuku, he let Izuku down. His default emotion is anger, it always has been, so that was the emotion he acted on during that riddle exercise. He yelled at Izuku because it was easier than yelling at himself. Rather than taking it like he had for years, Izuku yelled back and he was right. It hurt worse than when Katsuki thought Izuku was lying to him about his quirk for years. The next day proved how right Izuku was. Katsuki was facing consequences for the plan the Izuku came up with and honestly Katsuki couldn't bring himself to fight it. He was useless. He never wanted to do what he did or say what he said to Izuku. But he couldn't think of another plan and he couldn't fight everyone off forever. Leaving that office Katsuki knew two things for certain. He was the useless one in their friendship and he absolutely liked Izuku as more than a friend. The second part of Kirishima's comment entered his thoughts later that day. Yuraka was planning on asking Izuku out. Katsuki looked back on the interactions between the two, and his heart sank. It was apparent that Izuku might actually say yes. With the filter of the two of them liking each other, their actions made so much sense. Yuraka was so pushy because she wanted to get to know him better, and he forgave her so easily because he liked her back. 
That made so much more sense than anything else that he could come up with. It had confused Katsuki that Izuku would forgive her so easily. But if he likes her then it made perfect sense. Katsuki immediately realized that if that was really the case, then he needed to step back. Izuku deserved better than him. He was always angry and difficult and he had said so much he didn't mean. Uraraka might not be perfect for Izuku either, but she is better for him than Katsuki is. Since then Katsuki has been avoiding Izuku. It was painful, and Katsuki had been miserable, but it would be better for the other boy in the long run, and that was what was important. He knew that it was dumb to not strategize, but working with Uraraka and Izuku, plus Izuku's replacement best friend was too difficult for him. In the past week, since the riddle exercise, Izuku had apparently been spending a lot of time with Shinsu. Kaminari had been complaining about it all week to their friend group. Normally he wouldn't have anything against Shinsu, but he just couldn't deal with that right now. Moments after Katsuki turned to walk away he was suddenly grabbed around the middle but long strands of something. He thought that Shinsu had used his capture weapon to grab him. But as he was lifted into the air he was able to trace the shadowy black strands that grabbed him to Izuku. Once Katsuki caught sight of Izuku, he couldn't look away. His best friend was writhing in pain, shadowy tendrils flailing. His face was scrunched up, in pain or concentration, Katsuki couldn't tell which. As the majority of the tendrils were whipping around frantically flinging Yuraka and Shinsu. The strand that was holding on to Katsuki brought him closer. It was gentle, unlike the rest of the strands that were haphazardly swinging around. Katsuki was tempted to blast away the shadowy tendrils with his quirk, but they were coming from Izuku, and he didn't want to risk hurting him. He looked around frantically before his eyes landed on their two teammates huddling for cover just out of range. Eye bags, try to brainwash him. The grip around Katsuki's torso was getting tighter, it wasn't quite painful but it was uncomfortable and he didn't want to find out if it would get worse. Midoriya, Shinsu yelled but Izuku didn't seem to hear him. Midoriya, can you hear me? Izuku was unresponsive. The tendrils seemed to be growing, reaching out and grabbing bits of the building near them, destroying everything that was too close, except for Katsuki. There were massive trenches in the asphalt and holes in the buildings closest to them and Izuku looked like he was in more pain every second it continued. Katsuki found himself wishing that Aizawa would show up, or that Izuku would pass out. It hurt to see that much pain on his friend's face and the more rubble that was created the more dangerous the situation got. Katsuki had been forced to dodge a few pieces of concrete, but the flying pieces were getting larger and he wouldn't be able to dodge them forever. Suddenly a voice cut through the chaos, his voice. Deku Katsuki looked around but Izuku's eyes shot open. Can you hear me? I always, Izuku answered, looking right at Katsuki. Izuku was cut off as all the chaos suddenly stopped and his eyes went blank. The shadowy tendrils disappeared back into Izuku, who remained standing, unmoving. Katsuki fell to the ground from where he had been held up, a foot away from the concrete. It was silent for a moment as the three who were aware looked around to survey the damage. Should I release him? Shinsu broke the silence. Katsuki made eye contact with Shinsu and nodded, both of them preparing to move if it was necessary. Katsuki could tell the moment Shinsu broke his control because Izuku immediately fell to his knees, breathing heavily. They all stood back for a moment, waiting to see if the tendrils would appear again. When nothing happened they all rushed over to him. Deku are you okay? What was that? Uraraka pushed her way into Izuku's space. Katsuki took a step back to not be in the way. To his surprise Izuku pushed Uraraka aside to instead look at Katsuki. As soon as Izuku saw Katsuki he sighed and slumped forward. It was something to do with one for all. I saw a previous holder just like my dream the other day. Wah, well, Katsuki had so many questions. But before he could ask them Izuku shook his head and pushed himself to his feet. I'm okay, come on, we are in the middle of an exercise, we need to get moving. Katsuki watched in concern as Izuku marched forward. After a few minutes the other two joined him. Katsuki debated going off alone again, but he wanted to be nearby in case anything like that happened again. Resigning himself to a miserable time working with Yuraka and Shinsu he followed too. Katsuki groaned in irritation. So are we gonna come up with a fucking plan or are we just winging it? Katsuki asked. Instead of being answered by one of his teammates a different voice rang out, a particularly obnoxious one. Oh, Klasa thinks they are so impressive that they don't need to plan. How arrogant. Monoma stalked out from behind a building. The four of them got in defensive stances as Shota came out to join him. Monoma kept talking but Katsuki wasn't paying attention anymore. He was instead focusing on the noises behind them. He heard soft footsteps and he felt something in the air change behind him. Going off instinct Katsuki ducked while grabbing his teammates and forcing them down with him. Just as they moved something flew over their heads. As he got up he looked around. The other two members of the other team had snuck up behind them and they had used their quirks to attack with giant cans, which were coming back at them. Katsuki braced himself to attack and then blasted himself into the air. He took aim at the cans and exploded them, one after another. He was careful with his aim, 
making sure that the shrapnel from the cans exploded away from his own team and toward the other team. As the other team ducked and dodged Katsuki turned towards his own team. Let's go. Katsuki started to blast himself away hoping that his teammates would follow but before he could get away Yuraka quickly reached out, hitting Izuku and Shinsu and then grabbed onto Katsuki's ankle. Katsuki blasted onto a roof pulling his entire weightless team with him. We should have a couple minutes before any of them can get up here. We need to come up with a plan. Shinsu started talking the second they all landed on their feet on the roof. Izuku looked deep and thought for a moment before he spoke. Okay, this is what I am thinking. Izuku felt a lot better with his plan after Katsuki had made some changes to it. It still wasn't perfect but it will probably work better than what he originally came up with. After the whole situation with the new quirk, a quirk the previous holder called Black Whip, appearing he found it hard to focus on the task at hand. When he had agreed to take on one for all he thought it would work like a strength quirk, just like it had for All Might. Finding that he got the strength aspect plus potentially six more quirks was hard to believe. He couldn't wrap his head around it. It didn't help that he was worried about losing control again. Black Whip was painful and hard to control. He didn't even activate his quirk consciously. It just reacted to how strongly he wanted Katsuki near him and Yuraka away from him. Because of his worry about losing control his goal was to not use his quirk at all. It would be more difficult, but he couldn't risk hurting anyone. The plan he came up with had them split up into pairs. Him and Shinsu together and Yuraka and Katsuki together. The only reason he chose those pairings was because he wanted to keep Shinsu near him. After getting more info on Black Whip from its previous holder, he thought he might be able to control it, but just in case he wanted Shinsu near him to brainwash him out of it. That plan didn't go very far though, Katsuki didn't agree with it and he had a point. Shinsu had a great quirk, but it works best against opponents that don't know what it is, and unfortunately everyone is aware of how it works. That leaves him fighting quirkless. He can hold his own, and so can Izuku, but two people fighting quirkless really lowers their odds. The better option was Katsuki and Izuku paired up and Yuraka and Shinsu together. Yuraka argued that she should pair up with Izuku, but they didn't have time to discuss it further. They quickly hashed out the rest of their plan and then went on their way. They wanted to win this 4 minus 0 so there wasn't any time to waste. As Izuku and Katsuki got into position there was a weird tension surrounding them. It was the first time they were alone together since Izuku kept Katsuki from being expelled. There was a lot that Izuku wanted to say to Katsuki. He wanted to reassure him again that he wasn't mad about how Katsuki treated him before Yue. He wanted to yell at him for the past week, but mostly he just wanted to know why. But instead of saying any of those things, he remained silent, and so did Katsuki. Now was not the time nor place to worry about it. Instead they started putting their plan into motion. They were the last match and every round took place in the same setting, so they were familiar with the layout. There were two jails, each assigned to a specific team. Their team had been assigned to the jail that is in the industrial park. The other team's jail was on a city block. Izuku's and Katsuki's role was to change the setting around their jail. They couldn't completely move the jail out of the industrial park, away from the pipes and things, but they could move stuff around so that it wasn't so predictable. This was another reason Izuku had originally teamed them up like he had. Katsuki could soften the metal and pipes with his quirk to reshape it or use his explosions to move stuff. And Yuraka could just take the gravity away from things to move it. Hiroraka's new role with Shinsu also worked with her quirk well, but quirkless, neither worked well for Izuku, or so he thought. Not wanting to stand around doing nothing, Izuku started trying to roll a large pipe that was about 3 feet in diameter, but he didn't realize that it was attached to something. To his surprise the pipe didn't start to roll, instead it bent. He stepped back to see what was going on and found that the pipe wasn't free as he originally thought, but it also barely took any effort to bend. Curious, he took a deep breath and then lifted the entire pipe. It looked heavy, but he was able to lift it pretty easily. He hadn't really realized it now that he worked out in a gym instead of with everyday objects like he had on the beach, but he had gotten a lot stronger. Numbers on weights don't mean much to him without something to compare it to. Apparently the weights he was using made these feel light as a feather. Excited with his new revelation he got busy moving things around, all while barely breaking a sweat. Occasionally Izuku would check in with Katsuki who he found staring at him more than once. Izuku knew that they didn't have time for him to question it, so he tried to just shrug it off. It made him a little angry that after a week of radio silence Katsuki was staring at him like that, but he couldn't think about that now. He did notice that although he thought that Katsuki's quirk would work well for this job, the other boy was not nearly as efficient as him and he was struggling a bit to move stuff. Izuku knew that Katsuki would take it as an insult if he tried to help, so instead he focused on what he was doing. Soon enough they heard their cue to stop working and get ready for a fight. Luckily by then the area looked quite a bit different than it had when they started. In the distance there was yelling and rumbles that promised property damage, signs of a battle. 
Izuku was tempted to run in, but he knew that he couldn't. Besides the fact that running in would ruin what they were trying to do, he also knew that running in without using his quirk wouldn't work well. Class B is strong and Izuku is fairly well known for using his quirk when put in stressful situations, even if it is ill-advised. Izuku thought about putting down the pipe he was holding, but he decided against it. If he wasn't going to use his quirk then he should at least have a weapon. The steel pipe was a few feet long and six inches in diameter, so it worked well as a bat. It didn't take long for the noises to reach them. Within a few moments the Class B team made their way around the corner, chased there by a combination of Shinsu and Yuraka. The other team had been in the city, so Yuraka had found a wall that was as wide as the street they were running on and removed its gravity. With her chasing them forward Shinsu was able to use his voice changer to take control of Shota. He then used Shota's voice to direct the rest of his team to run into this industrial site to get away from the wall. Izuku and Katsuki jumped into the fight as soon as Class B got there. Izuku noticed that with the growing chaos Shinsu tried to direct Shota into the jail, but a chunk of enlarged rubble controlled by Yanagi clipped him and broke the connection. The battlefield they were on quickly turned to chaos, with Kodai and Yanagi working together to use enlarged objects as weapons. And Yuraka making things weightless, there was debris flying everywhere. Monoma was also joining in on it, having copied both Kodai and Yanagi's quirks. During all of that Shota was using his quirk to make any hit his teammates gotten had double the impact. To avoid all the rubble, Izuku was using his pipe as a bat, and apparently he was surprisingly good at baseball. He had mainly been swinging at small pieces of rubble, ones that wouldn't do more than just bruise whoever he had hit, but he squared up to a large piece, one that could cause some damage, and took aim. The other team had grouped up so they could work together better and defend each other. Izuku knew that their best bet was to separate them, so he aimed right at them. His goal wasn't to hit them. They were good enough heroes that they would move first, but he wanted to make sure that they would move in separate directions. With a loud crack the chunk of rubble hurtled toward the other team, just like he wanted. They all dove in different directions to avoid the debris. Unfortunately the force of the hit broke his pipe so Izuku threw it aside as he took stock of the battle. As Class B tried to regroup Class A attacked. Shinsu took advantage of the confusion to catch Kodai. He got her to shrink the things she had enlarged back to their original size before trying to get her towards the jail. Meanwhile Shota ended up in a fight against Katsuki and Yanagi ended up fighting Yuraka. Izuku wasn't worried about any of his teammates, they could more than hold their own. He was however worried about Monoma. After they all dove to avoid the debris Izuku had lost sight of him, he scanned the fights that were going on and caught a glimpse of dark fabric behind a large pipe. Cautiously, he moved towards the pipe but before he got there Monoma stepped out. Izuku was worried. He had no idea what quirks Monoma currently had. A bit ago he had his teammates quirks but they might have run out. And who knows who he could have touched on Izuku's team. Almost as an answer to Izuku's thoughts, Monoma stepped forward and grinned as his hands started popping. Izuku was quick to duck as Monoma set off an explosion right towards where Izuku's face had been. Izuku held back a chuckle. Katsuki's quirk could be devastating. That's undeniable, but Izuku knows explosion. It was the first quirk he really analyzed, and he never stopped analyzing it. Sure Monoma probably wasn't using it the same way Katsuki does, but the quirk is the same. Izuku had learned a long time ago how to listen to the small pops before an explosion and how to use those pops to predict how large the explosion is going to be. After Izuku dodged a few explosions Monoma seemed to get annoyed. He started going on and on about something. But Izuku didn't listen, he was still focused on the pops coming from Monoma's hands and the punches and kicks he was responding with. The rest of the battle faded to the background. He was back training with Katsuki a few weeks ago. He and Katsuki were the closest they had ever been and Izuku was able to relax in the burnt sugar smell. No one was bothering him with questions. And he had his best friend at his side, life was good. Izuku was brought back to reality when something smacked him, hard, in the back. He flew forwards into Monoma. Both of them slammed into a pole. It took a moment for them to detangle themselves from each other. As he stood up, Izuku felt some of the anger he had been feeling earlier flooding back into him. The contrast between where he thought he was and where he actually was reignited the anger from before. He glanced at his watch that had been counting down the time left in the exercise, and the anger grew. With less than a minute and a half left, only one person was in the jail. Shinsu had been successful in capturing Kodai, but he was struggling to help Yuraka, and Katsuki was still fighting. Honestly Izuku was shocked. Katsuki and Yuraka both excelled at fights like this, it made no sense that they were so unsuccessful. Izuku's anger was close to boiling over, and he could almost feel the black tendrils of Black Whip exploding out of him, but he held it in. As time was running out he knew that there wasn't much chance of winning like they wanted to if nothing changed soon. He thought back to what the previous holder of Black Whip had told him, and he made a decision. Focusing hard on his anger he called upon his quirk. It took a moment, but black tendrils exploded out of him again. This time though, they were more controlled. 
Scrunching his face in concentration Izuku willed the tendrils to grab onto his opponent, as well as the rest of the opposing team for good measure. He knew that he could grab people without hurting them from when he grabbed Katsuki earlier, but he wasn't sure how long he could go without causing damage. So he willed the tendrils to move quickly towards the jail once he had the other team firmly in his grasp. It was a struggle but he forced himself to let go as soon as the other team was entirely in the cell. Katsuki was nearest so as Izuku was wrestling with his quirk to release the other team, he ran over to the cell. As soon as the tendrils were gone, Katsuki slammed the door shut. Izuku collapsed to his knees as the alarm rang. Time was up, the exercise was over. Somehow, they had won. Izuku just wanted to talk to All Might about what had happened and then take a nap. Unfortunately first he needed to join the rest of the class to go over the fight. It was a slow walk back. Izuku was running low on energy, but his teammates refused to leave him behind. Iraraka talked his ear off, questioning everything that had happened while Shinzu helped hold him up as they walked. Katsuki stayed nearby as well. He trailed behind them silently. The team from Class B walked nearby but they didn't interact at all. They were quiet, probably mulling over their loss, and Izuku wished he could join them. He didn't wish he had lost. If he had wanted to lose he wouldn't have pulled his last move, but he yearned for quiet. Uraraka's chatter was giving him a headache. His headache only got worse when he joined the rest of the class. Everyone was freaking out and asking questions. He couldn't even make sense of it all. Someone was saying something about his muscles. Someone else was asking about Blackwick. It was all just chaos. Luckily it was only for a short amount of time because Aizawa got everyone's attention. However, Izuku's relief was short-lived. As soon as Aizawa got everyone's attention, he turned the class's attention back to Izuku. Midoriya, what was that? Ooh, Izuku wasn't sure how to answer, so he decided to go with as close to the truth as possible. I think it was a new aspect of my quirk. The first time I didn't have much control over it, but Shinsu brainwashing me helped me figure out how to control it. You didn't have control over it the first time you used it, so you decided to use it on the other team. Aizawa deadpanned, looking done with his problem child. We wanted to win. Izuku shrugged sheepishly. Ugh, problem child. Aizawa shook his head as turned back to the whole class. Izuku felt a bit guilty, it was a reckless plan, but they won. Vlad King started the critique with his own class, Monoma, Yanagi, Kodai, and Shota, you had great teamwork but you need to pay more attention to your surroundings. You started out strong, but you allowed yourselves to fall right into their trap. Monoma don't be so predictable. Anyone with eyes could see that Midoriya wasn't really paying attention to your fight. He obviously knows how to avoid Bakugou's quirk, if you had switched it up at all you could have had him. Hey Midoriya, how did you do that? You look like you were on a different planet but you were able to predict his every move. It was so manly Kirishima yelled out. Izuku hoped that Vlad King would ignore the interruption and move on. But it seemed that he too was curious to know the answer. Everyone's eyes were on him again, including the teachers. Oh, Ayu, got really used to hearing Kaken's quirk. I figured out that before every attack his hands pop with tiny explosions to prepare for it. If you listen closely, it sounds different depending on what attack he is going to use. Monoma's attacks were a little different, but the popping was similar enough. Izuku shrugged. He worried that Katsuki would be mad at him for revealing something like that to everyone. But when he looked over to the other boy, he found Katsuki just staring at his hands. Apparently, Katsuki hadn't realized that he had a tell before. Hey man, I fight Bakugou all the time and I have never heard any pops before his explosions. Kirishima looked at Izuku with confusion written all over his face. Izuku rubbed the back of his neck. Yeah, it's really quiet. I only figured it out recently and I have been around Kaken pretty much my whole life. What the hell Deku? That's how you suddenly improved fighting against me. Katsuki finally looked away from his sparking hands to yell. Hey, you got better too. Izuku defended. Yeah, cause your quirk does the same damn thing. You can hear static sparking through whatever limb you send your quirk to. Katsuki grumbled. Wait really? Izuku had never thought about what his quirk sounded like to someone else. He was itching for his notebook to write it all down. That's so manly. You both know each other's quirks so well that you can hear the other use it. Kirishima had a knowing sort of grin on his face. Izuku was confused about what that could possibly mean. But Katsuki seemed to understand. Because he turned away from the conversation as soon as he saw Kirishima grin. Vlad King looked almost amused for a moment before going back to his critique. Inagi and Shota, take advantage of when your opponents are distracted, don't get distracted with them. Kodai be more aware of where your teammates are. Monoma wasn't anywhere near enough to say something to you but you responded even knowing Shinsu's quirk. Vlad King sighed, overall, you did well. I'm not sure if there was anything you could have really done about Midoriya's final move. Class B looked pretty pleased. They had things to improve but overall their teacher thought they did well. Izuku's team were looking at Aizawa with dread. They knew that Aizawa was about to rip into them. I honestly don't even know where to begin. All of you at different points of the exercise stopped paying attention to what was going on around you. 
Midori, even if you were just listening to Monoma using Bakugo's quirk you can't just zone out like that. You didn't even notice the pipe flying at you until after it hit you. Bakugo and Yuraka. I'm not sure why you thought that Midoriya's fight was so interesting but you should know better than to get distracted in the middle of a fight. Shinsu, you would have had Shota at the beginning if you had stopped checking in on Midori. Izuku noticed that each of his teammates hung their heads in shame. And he would have as well. But he was confused why everyone on his team had been so distracted by him. From what it sounded like Shinsu kept checking to make sure that he was okay which was actually really thoughtful of him. But Yuraka and Katsuki were just watching him fight. He had no idea why they might have thought that to be interesting. Both of them had seen him fight many times before. Throughout the whole exercise you barely worked as a team. You did come up with a plan and follow it but it was like you were all fighting separately. None of you worked together after you managed to get the other team where you wanted them. Your plan seemed to rely on changing up the landscape of the area, which I can't say with certainty did anything. But you also didn't choose the best people to do it. Bakugo can explode things well and is fairly strong, but your Raka could have moved things much easier. Also Midoriya you seemed surprised that you were strong enough to do anything even though you were moving those pipes like they were nothing. What was that about? Oh, Izuku shrunk under the questioning eyes of everyone there. I really didn't think I could do much at first. I knew that I am really strong when using my quirk, but I was hesitant after what had happened earlier. And I guess never really thought about the weight I use at the gym. It has always been just a number, not something real that I might have to move. I never thought about it, but I guess those pipes were less than 750 kilograms. Izuku shrugged. 750 kilograms, no way. Kaminari looked at Izuku like he was a god. That's your PR. Dang dude, I need to work out with you. Kirishima grinned at him. That's not actually my PR, Izuku said quietly. What? Nearly everyone exclaimed at that. That's my rep weight. My PR is actually 1000 kilograms I think. I don't know. I don't really care too much about maxing out. I'm just trying to get stronger. If your quirk is so powerful why does it matter that you get stronger? Seems to me like you are just trying to show off. Monoma's voice rang out. Izuku looked at Monoma like he had two heads. My quirk literally destroys my bones every time I use it at 100%. Right now I only safely use about 20%. I have to get stronger so I can utilize my full power. Izuku thought it would be obvious that to handle his quirk he needed to be stronger. After all everyone knew of his bone-breaking habit. But apparently people hadn't made that connection. Because just about all of his classmates looked shocked at the new information. Aizawa looked like he wanted this class to end already. So far he didn't seem impressed with the class, and especially not with Izuku. How did any of you come to the conclusion that Midoriya and Bakugo would be the best options to move everything? Why wasn't Yuraka there? That was Deku's original idea. But Bakugo pointed out that leaving Shinsu and Deku to do the chasing might not have worked as well. Without Deku using his quirk he thought that they might be overpowered. Yuraka spoke up. That is actually not a bad reason to switch. Aizawa dragged his hand down his face. Whatever, congratulations. Class A won the exercise. Class is dismissed. Midoriya, please stay behind to answer a couple more questions. As the class filed out of the room Izuku got Katsuki's attention with a click. Hey, stay behind. I think Aizawa should get the whole story. And you are a part of this too now. Katsuki didn't respond but he did stay behind so Izuku took that as a success. Izuku was going to ask All Might to stay as well, but the teacher seemed to have decided that on his own. Vlad King followed the students out and soon it was just Aizawa. All Might, Katsuki and Izuku left. Bakugo I don't recall asking you to stay behind. Aizawa raised his eyebrow at the lingering boy. I asked him to. He should be here as well. All Might and Izuku spoke at the same time. Aizawa raised his eyebrow even higher. My boy, I think that it is about time that we tell Aizawa. All Might turned to Izuku, ignoring the other teacher for a moment. I was thinking the same thing. He can probably help the most with this new development. Izuku nodded before turning back to the confused hero. What is going on here? Aizawa looked, completely lost, at the three other people. I told you a bit ago that I was quirkless for a long time right? Well I still technically am. Obviously I have a quirk now, but biologically I am quirkless. What? Aizawa looked even more lost. I don't ever tell anyone what my quirk is, but it's called one for all. It's a sacred torch to be passed down through generations. It was created by a stockpiling quirk combining with a quirk to pass down quirks. I got it from my master. And on the day of the entrance exam I passed it down to young Midori. All Might took up telling the story. I'm sorry, back up. It was created by combining two quirks, one of which was a quirk to pass down quirks. What? Aizawa looked at the former number one hero like he had grown a second head. All Might sighed. At the dawn of quirks there were two brothers, one born with a powerful quirk, the quirk to steal other quirks. All for one Aizawa whispered under his breath, the other born quirkless. The quirkless brother was weak, but he spoke out against his brother's greed. So all for one forced a stockpiling quirk on him. 
However, the quirkless brother was never actually quirkless. He had a secret quirk, the ability to pass on his quirk. The two quirks merged to become the quirk that we now call one for all. The quirk has been passed down for generations with the sole purpose of defeating all for one. Unfortunately, all for one has killed every previous holder, until me. I passed on the quirk thinking all for one was dead. All Might hung his head. I was mistaken. But I used the last bit of one for all left in me to defeat him. Midoriya is now the current holder of the quirk, the ninth holder of one for all. Aizawa remained silent for a long time, looking between All Might and Izuku. After a while he noticed that Katsuki was still there. Wait, what does Bakugu have to do with all of this? He figured it all out after our fight at Ground Beta. That's how we became friends again, we stopped keeping secrets from each other. Izuku noticed that Katsuki flinched at the mention of secrets but he continued on. He helps me train and joins in on my meetings with All Might. There are so few people that know it would be stupid to not take advantage of the extra insight. I wanted him here for this because I only found out about Black Whip during that exercise. Kakin and All Might don't know about it yet either. Black Whip, Aizawa and All Might asked. Yeah, it was the quirk of a previous holder. What? All Might looked at Izuku with wide eyes. I already told All Might about this but I should probably start at the beginning for the rest of you. Last week I had a dream where I saw the younger brother of All for One receive the stockpiling quirk to create one for all. I told All Might about it and apparently his master said something about how they will meet again in one for all, and I have seen the vestiges once before. When I fought Shinsu at the sports festival, but I didn't really interact with them, they just sent one for all through my finger. Izuku wasn't sure he should add that last part but he figured being completely honest and thorough would be the most helpful. I only ever saw the vestiges once, and I never had dreams about previous holders of the quirk. My master seemed to know a little about this, but I do not. All Might added. Okay so that happened earlier this week, but what does that have to do with what happened today? Izuku could tell Aizawa was losing patience with this long drawn out explanation. At the beginning of the exercise I got really angry. There has been a lot going on this past week and it kinda boiled over. I wanted Kakin to stop walking away, and Yuraka to go away so. Izuku shrugged his shoulders. Black Whip made that happen. It kept Yuraka away from me and started pulling Kakin closer. I had no idea how to control it or stop it or even what it was. I thought I was responding to Kakin, but I guess it was Shinsu because he managed to brainwash me. Izuku could see a slight proud smile on Aizawa's face. It made him smile a bit as well. I'm not sure why, but when I'm under Shinsu's brainwashing I can see the vestiges. This time I saw a bald man. He didn't identify himself, but he told me about his quirk, black whip, and about one for all in general. Apparently all six of the previous holder's quirk factors have been dormant inside one for all. As one for all has been strengthening, so have the other quirks in its core. Now that they are strong enough, I will be gaining access to them, starting with Black Whip. Wait, six quirks. Deku, I thought you were the ninth. Katsuki said, focusing on the least confusing part of the whole thing. I am. The first holder's quirk was one for all and Izuku started. And I was quirkless as well. All Might spoke up. Katsuki and Aizawa remained silent, still processing. After a moment. All Might took the opportunity to ask, did you find out anything about any more of the previous holder's quirks? No, I only learned anything about Black Whip. He said I was misusing it, and that I need to control my emotions when using it, especially anger. He also mentioned that it will be stronger than it was when he had it, and really that all the quirks will be stronger than when their previous holder had them. Aizawa sighed. So just to recap you didn't suddenly manifest a quirk. You were given one that happens to also be ridiculously powerful and contains multiple quirks, majority of them we don't know. He looked tiredly between All Might and Izuku. Yes, although we do know one other quirk. Izuku confirmed. I know my master, Nana Shimer's quirk. She called it float. She was able to use it to fly above the ground. So the problem child will fly? Great. Aizawa sounded like he either needed a nap or a drink. And no one could blame him. Anything else? Any other revelations that will cause me to question everything I have ever known about quirks? Everyone remained silent. Izuku felt a bit guilty that he dragged Aizawa into this. The teacher didn't look at all happy to know all this new information, but he knew that in the long run Aizawa would want to know. No, Aizawa looked around quickly. Good, keep it that way. Aizawa sighed. For now at least, keep it that way for now. Aizawa looked between the three of them. I need a couple days to process this. Are you all available to meet up again next Monday? As soon as they all confirmed that they were available and worked out a time, Aizawa left. After a moment All Might followed him out. Izuku half expected Katsuki to follow them and keep ignoring him. For a moment it seemed like that was what was happening. Katsuki started walking out, but as he reached the door he turned back, are you coming or what? Izuku wanted to be happy that apparently Katsuki wanted him to come along, but he was still so confused and drained. Using Black Whip had been physically and emotionally draining, and that conversation didn't help. They walked in silence for a bit on the way back to the locker room. 
Finally Katsuki spoke up. Sorry about this past week. I didn't realize it would bother you so much. Kakin, why wouldn't it bother me? You are my best friend but you just stopped talking to me with no explanation. I have no idea what I did wrong to make you hate me. Thankfully Izuku didn't notice that Katsuki flinched at the word friend. What no, I don't hate you. And you didn't do anything fucking wrong either. I had some shit I had to work through. Had some. Katsuki you know I don't blame you for anything you said in middle school right? You can't still blame yourself. Yeah, I fucking know. You've told me enough, it was something else. Kakin spoke while looking at the ground. Izuku looked at him carefully, searching for any trace of a lie. He couldn't find one. But for some reason he still didn't believe that Katsuki was telling the complete truth. He knew better than to question his friend anymore though, so he dropped it. Well, did you work through whatever you needed to? Or can I expect the silent treatment to continue? Izuku tried to make it sound like a joke, but he didn't have the energy to sell it. Katsuki sighed. Silent treatment is over nerd. You won't be able to get rid of me. Katsuki nudged Izuku's shoulder lightly. At that Izuku finally let out a small chuckle. After spending a week mainly alone, having a friend back felt amazing. I wouldn't want to get rid of you Kakin. Good. You might want to tell Ibags then that I am reclaiming the role of best friend. What do you mean reclaiming? You never lost that title. And why would I tell Shinsu that? Izuku was confused. What did Shinsu have to do with their friendship? I heard from Pikachu that apparently Ibags has been spending a ton of time with you this past week. Katsuki looked confused now too. What? Oh, he has been spending time with his family. He can't exactly advertise that so I was probably just a cover. Izuku laughed. Shinsu had talked about telling Kaminari about his family, but he has no idea if he ever actually told him. Either way though, Shinsu didn't want it to get out to the rest of the class. Either Shinsu or Kaminari made up that excuse, and it wasn't a bad one to be honest. No one could really verify who Izuku was spending time with because he wasn't spending time with anyone. Who have you been hanging out with the past week? I would think Pink Cheeks but you seemed pretty annoyed with her questions earlier. Katsuki looked interested in his answer. No one really. Ada and Todoroki are alright, but they are busy a lot of the time, and they don't like studying with people. I've been avoiding Yuraka and by association, too. Back when Yuraka thought she knew all my secrets she was fine. But now that there are things that I won't tell her she won't leave me alone. She is either talking bad about you or asking questions. I just want her to stop. Izuku started getting annoyed again thinking about it. As he walked he could feel his quirk boiling under his skin. Abruptly, he stopped walking to take a few deep breaths. Releasing Black Whip now wouldn't do any good. He had no idea what exactly Black Whip would do without the object of his anger nearby, but he really didn't want to find out. Hey, Deku, are you okay? Katsuki suddenly appeared in front of Izuku. Yeah, I'm just so, so fucking mad. I thought of Yuraka as a good friend, but she hasn't been acting like one recently. Izuku paused as the realization hit him. Actually, no one has been acting like my friend recently. Izuku groaned. Ugh, I thought that here at UA would be different. I thought I would have friends here. But this past week the only person that wants to spend any time with me just wants to question me. Izuku was practically yelling at this point but he didn't care anymore. Am I not allowed to have secrets? Is that it? I mean, you keep secrets from me. But the only reason that you agreed to be friends again is because I revealed all my secrets. I'm sure Yuraka has secrets, but she won't stop questioning me about my secrets. Izuku took a deep breath and tried to speak calmly, so yeah, I'm pissed. Izuku pushed past Katsuki and walked away. He had wanted to be around Katsuki all week, but now that he actually had the chance to spend time with him, he was too angry. He thought that it would all be fine, that he could have a fun normal time with his best friend, but he can't, not now. He knew that his anger was definitely influenced by his exhaustion, but it wasn't unwarranted, and from Katsuki's lack of reaction, it was obvious that Katsuki thought it was so as well. 